Number 11, Colby Warren. Hello, folks, and welcome to Spanish Fork 17's coverage of Boys Varsity Baseball here at Maple Mountain High School. We've got the Crosstown rivalry matchup of the Spanish Fork Dons taking on the hosting Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. And on the mound, I'm Mac Branning, and I am excited to be Blaine here today and to have Carter. you with us as we bring you this rivalry matchup between these two programs that love to hate each other and love to play against each other. Should be a lot of fun. This is the uh, most in recent, the in the most recent anthem. matchup, Maple Mountain took the victory. We've got the national anthem coming up here that we will pause for. With that, once teams. again, we welcome you to this matchup here for Spanish Fork taking on Maple Mountain High School. Bit of a warm uh, afternoon, or at least behind home plate it is, uh, with the con a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, chillier, feel a little bit nicer out on the uh, green grass. Beautiful day, great day for some baseball. And uh, on the mound for Maple Mountain today, that's going to be Blake Carter, number four. Chase Johnston uh, completely shut down the... Spanish Fork Dons in their last matchup just a few days ago. So, of course, Blake Carter going to get the start on the bump. He's been a revelation for Coach Thomas and the Golden Eagles. Has some fantastic uh, stats here. He's had five appearances on the season and leads the team in ERA coming in at 1.17. He uh, also leads the team in wins. He's got a 3-0 record. He's not really going to overpower you too much. His uh, strikeout ratio is not incredibly high, but he's going to get some weak contact. You better have the defense ready whenever he is on the mound. And want to give a uh, quick introduction here to uh, my uh, partner, Andrew, who's uh, going to be taking over the play-by-play -play duties as we move along this afternoon. And uh, Andrew, good to have you here today. Yeah, good to be here, Max. Sorry for, for being late. Uh, unfortunately, I have a day job. Um, and so <laughs> I was uh, having to deal with some 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 stuff over over at work and had to bump my nose my way on over here. But very excited for this ball game. Always love doing the Golden Eagles and the Dons. And just like you mentioned, Mac, I mean, yeah, that 8-1 to one, that eight to one ball game on Monday was, uh, was really something. I mean, Chase Johnson, absolutely magnificent on the mound and uh it's just been a really really just solid season for maple mountain in general 10 and 2 on the season so far really great in non-region play and then getting their first win in region play here against the dons and uh hoping to be able to get a clean sweep here against uh the crosstown rival as it is will dark digging in here for the dons that one is pumped in there for a strike will dart one of the uh better hitters on Spanish Fork comes in with a 375 average he leads the team on uh, in runs with 12. Yeah Dart always it has been batting at the top of the lineup ever since uh, pretty much since day one of uh, being in the program and he's just been fantastic for them was a uh, second team 5A All-Stater last year as a as a shortstop and uh, being asked this year to do a little bit more of the pitching as well was uh, the starter in Monday state Monday's game my apologies, it is not Will Dart. Dart is actually in the, looks like Dart is actually in the on-deck circle. Um, 
I'm just so used. I'm just so used to Will being the the lead off hitter. So I just kind of yeah, went no rolling. That's uh, that's Nixon. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a yeah Nixon Nixon Warren. Warren who also is listed with two different numbers, but today he's got 15 on the back of the jersey. I yes, said not as much. Will wears number six, so actually he's in the hole. He's batting third today here for the Dons. The Warren, the center fielder for Spanish Fork, the 3-2 pitch is going to be up near his chin, and he'll back away, and he will start things off here with a leadoff walk. Yeah, so Warren actually has a 382 batting average and leads the team in hits. Of course, he reaches base there. That's going to bump up the uh, on-base percentage, which came in at a cool 463. It's, it's not too bad, yeah. you know, basically getting on every other time. It makes sense having him lead off, I suppose. Absolutely, and again, as a center fielder, he's definitely got some wheels on him. Lamps in the left fielder is going to also see one right up by his face, and that will be ball one. Behind the plate for the Golden Eagles today is uh, Catterson. This might be tested here early. Let's see how what he's got in that arm. It's Braden Catterson. He'll make a throw over to first. Chrisman will collect it and send it back on over to the pitcher. Count now 2-0 and oh on the... Spanish Fork Don starting pitcher today. Lampson normally out in the outfield, out in left field, but today we'll be getting the start here for Spanish Fork. Bringhurst on third, fully expecting the bunt here. Not happening. Yeah, absolutely. That one pumped in there for a strike nicely there. Look, might be a little bit of room in that top part of the zone there. Something for Carter to keep an eye on. Or Lamson gets a little piece of that one, taps it foul. It's going to move the count now to two balls and two strikes. Imagine that uh, Bringhurst now, yeah, makes his way back over yeah. to the actual infield dirt. <laughs> little pop-up that Chrisman is going to track down and make the play for out number one here in the top of the first. A runner moving on the play. So uh, Warren having to get back there quickly. Looking up the uh, base running stats here, Warren has six stolen bases on the year, so certainly a threat to uh, be on the move. Yeah, again, that's uh, why for a little bit there, you think that, that Lamson was uh, you know, potentially going to do a sacrifice bunt, and they also were being very careful with Warren over there at first base. That one catches the outside corner for strike one to Will Dart. Again, the All-State shortstop enjoying a, another pretty solid season here for the Dons. He rockets one over towards short. The play is made by Leifson. They go to turn two, and the ball ends up getting away oh, from man. Chrisman. Oh, oh! They're calling interference. I think yeah. is what I've heard. Yeah, that wow. is, dang! That's uh, that's one way to end the top of the inning. So, dark grounds out to short on the the fielder's choice, and then is out via the interference call. So it'll be the end of the top of the first year. The score will stay nothing to nothing here as we move on over to the bottom half. Of the inning gives us an opportunity to thank our sponsors here. At Spanish Fork 17, that's Lance Wilson State Farm, Two Jacks Pizza, MVP Sports, and Triple T Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in today, whether you are on the channel or on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Spanish Fork 17. Be sure to click that subscribe button to be able to join the Spanish Fork 17 family, get all the awesome content that we have on there, which uh, includes wonderful high school baseball as we uh, get a view here of the region seven standings or i'm having a nice season as well they're actually sitting at number one so far on the season springville doing pretty good here too this is rpi rankings by the way not actual like you know standing standings because everyone is either yeah. one one to know or own one at this yes, point yeah. <laughs> but yeah so rpi they've got the top four of the top six teams are in region seven and if you include spanish fork there that's uh that's five in the top ten so that's some pretty crazy stuff here region seven absolutely Absolutely, just a, a great baseball region. So, again, bringing things up here, Springville at 4, Maple Mountain at 5, Salem Hills at 6, Spanish Fork at 9, uh, Cedar Valley at 11, 19, Timpview, and then 20, Wasatch. 
Yeah, you know, early, of course, as we take a look at the standings there, as you mentioned, everyone 1-0 and or 0-1, so <laughs> we'll continue to see some separation here. You know, Spanish Fork and Maple Mountain, of course, a rivalry, but there's been a, you know, a, a bit of a shift here in this rivalry. It was Spanish Fork that maybe had the... Uh, the advantage in the bragging rights most years, of course, winning a state championship over Maple Mountain. But uh, Coach Thomas, I don't want to say that he has transformed the program because Maple Mountain has always been solid, but uh, he's definitely maybe made some improvements and uh, kept the success sustainable. As uh, you know, it started early his first year with Maple Mountain uh, with a huge upset over uh, Spanish Fork in the uh, state playoffs, a game I'm pretty sure you were there for. I, I certainly was. I was there for that whole series, and oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, that is the most like electric playoff baseball <laughs> I've been a part of. Like The crowd was insane, mm -hmm. um, those, especially those last two games where Maple Mountain was able to come back after losing that first game yep. in the series, and it looking like Spanish Fork, you know, the number one overall seed that year, was going to cruise to a, a pretty easy... Uh, defeat there over the golden eagles instead they come soaring in and get the get the upset there because that was yep. that was a year the spanish fork i mean they were oh that yeah. was that was a stacked crew well, yeah i, I mean, mean <laughs> year after winning the state yep. championship they were they were hoping to go back to back yep beating maple mountain in that state title and then maple mountain losing a ton of talent off of that year yes. and they pull off that huge upset so yeah i feel like it gets mentioned anytime now we have spanish fork and maple mountain play each other but it's a fun rivalry Maple Mountain and Coach Thomas have, you know, maybe gotten the better of the rivalry the last few seasons. So, uh, you know, Spanish Fork is going to want to do everything they can to get some uh, bragging rights here and, and uh, salvage one today. Yeah, for the Dons, they are definitely looking for looking for the split here. And, uh, again, they've been hovering right around 500 basically all season long as that one goes a little bit low there to Thomas for a ball. Right now sitting at 6-5 and five so far on the season uh, and so yeah looking for kind of that that signature win as you will on the season this would definitely count as one being here in a way um you know a way as yeah. it can for a crosstown rivalry but you know yeah at uh, the golden eagles field so taking one away from them would be really big here for spanish fork that one is going to be low and outside who's counting out of two balls and one strike this is a uh, riley lamson who is on the mound for spanish fork a lot of pitchers that have been used for Spanish Fork, but this one might be top of the list. Comes in with a 1.08 ERA in three appearances. Thomas gets a little piece of that one. It'll even the count here at two balls and two strikes. Lamson has uh, 13 strikeouts. Yeah, Lamson, a guy that has some pitching experience, but really hasn't been like heavily relied on as of yet um, in terms of... Um, what, how they've deployed things in terms of their pitching, but uh, being asked to do a little bit more here this season, kind of like Will Dart has been asked to take on a little bit more of the responsibilities on the bump here uh, this particular season for Spanish Fork. They kind of splitting things with Tegan Scott as well has gotten a lot of a lot of run thus far. As Thomas puts a big charge into that one, but it'll be out in front of it for a, a very long foul ball. Wind seems to be ever so slightly, maybe at times a little bit stronger, blowing out uh, from right to left, or it feels a little bit more from where we are from home out to left field. But uh, so a little bit more uh, power heading out to left, and ball might die a bit more hit to center or right field. Check swings, but uh, nothing oh. doing there. And that's going to be strike three. Rings up Thomas there. First strikeout of the day for Riley Lampson. That one surprised me. I almost thought there was a better chance that he made an attempt at it, but it was a called strike three. So uh, that one yeah, a little bit off the edge from my perspective. Had some movement, though. It did. Had some, some good movement to it. And uh, excellent framing there by uh, senior Cal Nielsen to – Ensured the strike count there, and uh, that ball will just barely miss there to Max Walker for a ball. And Walker is a guy that they are very excited to uh, to see back in the lineup. Was not in the lineup kind of start of the season, but has provided a nice spark for them since coming back. So that one is going to miss as well. The count now 2-0. and yeah, The thing that's interesting with... Maple Mountain's lineup, just at least based on these season stats that I've seen, is they they uh, they don't follow your typical uh, setup that you see on your lineup. Tapper that will be collected over there at first base, and the 
Shovel pass will be made over to Lamson for out number two. So I guess what I mean by that is you've got Bennett Averett, who leads the team in uh, batting average right now, 481. Uh, 13 hits, 11 RBS. He's batting all the way down in the eighth spot today. So Coach Thomas kind of, you know, switching things around and, and uh, not going with just your traditional give me my best hitters up at the top of the order. And uh, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I think it's good to switch things up. Yeah, so. no, it's 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 about comfort, I think, right. for, for Bennett as a – oh, man, Crispin absolutely unloads on that particular pitch. Unfortunately for him, it is going to be foul. But, oh, my goodness, that was, that was home run yep. number four on the season, if that thing <laughs> stays fair. Absolutely crushed that thing. Um, Averitt is is a guy that has kind of bounced around in the lineup as you've as you've mentioned, Mac, but has mostly been near the bottom of the order um, just to get his confidence up. He had uh, kind of had a rough year last year, but he's a guy that there's a ton of potential with. Again, he's basically right there with Crispin in terms of production so far. As Crispin gets another, another. load of one and just ripping it right now, but just a little bit early on. So the count moves to zero and two. Crispin listed six four, two hundred fifteen pounds. Uh, yeah, he's the big, the big first baseman. NFL linebacker. Yep. <laughs> That's And uh, Lamson getting away with two right there. I see they wanted that call off the same edge before. That one I think a little bit further off than the, the previous pitch was to Thomas. <clears throat> kind of one and two on the, the big power hitter, Crispin. You'll also notice it's kind of fun with this stance. He uh, Once we get to that, that two-strike approach, he really widens his stance a little bit, really kind of. Gets his feet a bit further apart, squats down a little bit more. Kind of an interesting take on a, a two-strike approach. The one-two is going to be in the dirt. Nice job by Nielsen to keep it in front of him. Can't move the two balls and two strikes. Well, he's crushed both pitches that were in the zone, uh, and then he's taken two off the plate. So this is, even though there's two outs, nobody on, I think there's some pressure here for Lamson to get Chrisman out. There's one going to be a tapper that... Will be played by Dart, and that will be the end of the inning. A quick one, two, three there for Spanish Fork. The score will stay nothing to nothing, and we'll get you inning number two when we come back on Spanish Fork 17. If you're looking for a workout, you know MVP Sports is the place to start, and that includes pickleball. MVP Sports has all you need to get active in this growing sport. Paddles, shoes, clothing, and the pickleballs. MVP Sports in Spanish Fork. The best time to check your furnace is before it fails, and you can rely on Triple T to do the job right. Our technicians are trained every year so you can sleep better at night, knowing your furnace is safe to operate. Call Triple T at 798-7711 to schedule your tune-up today. Welcome back to Spanish Fork 17, inning number seven of this one between the Spanish, inning number two of this one between the Spanish Fork Dons and the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. The score is nothing to nothing. Uh, good clean innings from both teams thus far. So it's going to be the middle of the order here that uh, Blake Carter is going to have to deal with. It will be, will be Cal Nielsen followed by Jackson Sorensen and then it'll be Anderson coming up there in the sixth spot there for Spanish Fork. It was a great pitch by Lamson, by the way, at the end of that last inning. Just a little breaking ball right where he's been getting the strike calls and got Chrisman to lean a little bit, got him reaching. Nice little rollover pitch. That one pumped in for a strike on Nielsen. Nielsen really coming a little bit more into his own this season for Spanish Fork. Already has two home runs on the season and really has done just an excellent job behind the dish here for Spanish Fork. Really has always had that skill set with him, but it really has improved his tools of the trade behind the plates and uh, really handles the rotation pretty well in my opinion and uh, again has really added some nice pop um, to his approach there at the plate. Yeah, he has the only two home runs on the season for the Dons. So always great to get some offensive production from your backstop Count now three and one on the Spanish four catcher. Nice hitters count for him. The three one up coming here from Carter is going to be a big swing and miss. Does a nice job of pulling the string there. A little bit of a change up there and moves the count out of three and two. This one is going to be slapped but foul. So 
Nielsen will stay alive with the count still full. Little slow dribbler eventually collected. That's actually the, the second one collected by that specific fan. <laughs> well, away with some souvenirs. Yeah. yeah. And then popular spot. <laughs> This one, a rocket up and over the head of the third baseman, Bringhurst. That's going to be the first base hit of this ball game. And Nielsen is going to be digging in. He's going to get himself a nice stand-up two jacks double here to start things off in the top of the second inning. What a rope there from the catcher, Cal Nielsen. Yeah, from what I could gather there from this perspective, it looks like they went back to that same pitch that they had right before, which they got a little rollover on, but... Great job by Nielsen to make the adjustment and probably a mistake there for Maple Mountain to go right back to that same spot. Oftentimes when you see a, sec a second pitch in that same location, you know it's coming and uh, yep. I've seen it before so you can better time it up that second time. Yep. Digging in now is Jackson Nielsen. Not Jackson Nielsen. Sorensen. Sorensen. Yep. Normally I can say Nielsen, and I'm somewhat correct for, uh, for <laughs> Spanish Fork because they also have Britt on the team as well as that one. will catch yep. the outside corner for a strike. Yeah, Sorensen in the uh, five spot. Limited action so far this year, but has a 259 average. No one from Carter swung on and missed for strike two. Wasn't sure if maybe we'd see a bunt here or something, but with Nielsen on the base paths, uh, I'm not sure if Sorensen's experience with bunting, maybe not that surprising. The 0-2 will miss just a little bit low and outside, so count now one ball and two strikes. We do have a, a speed-up runner over there at second base, and ah. Nielsen the... Uh, the catcher here today, so they they do like bringing in that that speed up runner for him. That is uh, it's number two, it's uh, Peterson. It's time will be called. Sorensen getting himself recollected. Peterson four steals on the year, so got some speed. Carter definitely uh, keeping an eye on him. The one, two with some late break there that'll go out of the strike zone. Move the count to two and two. Do you see a nice view there of Peterson as he makes his way back over to second base, getting a pretty nice lead over there too. A two, two pitch to Sorensen. He checks his swing and that one will just miss and it's gonna move the count to full. That's the corner that Got a call, it looked like earlier, but it was on a breaking ball. That one just straight heat off the plate. Nice job by Sorensen to battle back here in this at bat. The count three and two. Again, big situation here for the Dons with that leadoff double by Nielsen. Big scoring opportunity. Dons hoping to draw first blood here in this uh, second game of this series between their crosstown rivals, the Golden Eagles. Golden Eagles taking game one on Monday. That score eight to one. Spanish Park hoping to exact some revenge here in game number two. And uh, Sorensen does a nice job to hold off and gets himself on base with the walk. Well, Carter right now missing a lot on his glove side. Um, just from what I've seen in, in limited viewing of Carter, it looks like he just maybe a little off balance and uh, kind of falling off a little bit on that glove side a bit. So, uh, you know, it's, it's tough when you've got your head turning like that back to second and fourth. You can... Uh, Lose that balance a bit, lose your uh, your structure. But he's been living outside a good bit, and I, I'd like to see if he can start to jam some of these hitters a bit more with some heat. I mean, he certainly has some, as that one is going to be a nice move just to keep things honest on the base pass. And back here for the Dons is number... 18, Brecken Anderson. Anderson, a 375 batting average, but it looks like they're going to call on him here to uh, lay down a bunt. They do show bunts, and uh, he'll be a tick high, and he'll move the count to one ball and no strikes. They are definitely uh, playing as much of that, that uh, mental game as possible there as uh, you saw 
Layson like absolutely just sprint over to second base. <laughs> yep. Bunt is called again, and that one is going to catch the outside part of the plate for strike one. I'd honestly, I, I'd like to see Carter just focus in on the hitter here. There's a lot going on behind him at second, and he's keeping an eye, his eye on it, but he's off right now. He, he does not have his, uh, his motion correct, so. The bunt is, in fact, laid down, and it just kind of dies right in front of the mouse. So there was a potential opportunity there for Anderson to get on, but nice job there by Chrisman to make the stretch, and that will be out number one, but it does the job as it does advance the runners and gets two runners in the scoring position. Sight for sore eyes there. I love seeing a beautiful bunt drop down right in front of the pitcher. No chance to get anybody at any other bases. A great job. So Sorensen over to second base, Peterson over to third. And a big moment here again for the Dons. So that one is going to miss. It'll be ball one to Cal Marziel. Cal charges into that one. That's going to be a rope out to center field. Oh, Avery wow, with an absolutely fantastic throw. Oh, that's, I mean, that, that feels like a pretty, pretty Huge. easy sacrifice fly opportunity there. But a nice job by Avery to make the play and just throw an absolute frozen rope home. Yeah. And I don't know if he was going to test it anyway, but Peterson was actually late tagging there too. So it was kind of over as soon as that ball was caught. Peterson, I don't think he was even on the bag when it was caught. So huge out number two there on a well-hit ball. So a little fortunate there for Maple Mountain. That one will miss just a tick outside here for ball one. It's Bryson Shipman that's up here for Spanish Fork. And he's going to send one that's going to go towards short and it's going to be bobbled a little bit as uh, there's just uh, not really much of anywhere to go for, for Leifson on that particular play so gobbles it up and uh, that is going to be um, it's going to be an RBI there for, for Bryson Shipman and that's going to be the first run of this ball game. Yeah, great job putting it in play. Uh, you know isn't that just baseball right there an absolute rope into center field caught for an out no run scored and then a three hopper hit in between short and third base gets the job done a base hit. That's why you got to love the sport. That is that is just kind of how it goes sometimes. Is that's a see, see that's what I'm talking there. about right there. Is you got to go inside on these guys. So uh, Carter has been living on that outside part of the plate, uh, but he's missing a good bit. Uh, I like to see a little bit more of that inside work. Yeah, absolutely. Ties Tegan Scott up in knots there. So that one's going to be a little high and inside. So moves the count to even here, one and one. Shipman picked up his second RBI on the year for that infield hit. Infield single bringing in Peterson, and it does move Sorensen over there to third base as well as one gets hit into the backstop and move the count out of one ball and two strikes. So Tegan Scott up here with two outs in the top of the second inning. Spanish Fork getting the first run of this ball game on that infield single by Shipman. Runner is going at first, and uh, Catterson fakes the throw to second, then goes third just to make sure to keep Sorensen close. So it'll end up being a, a stolen base there for Shipman, and the, he will move into scoring position. And the count will uh, the count should have moved to two and two. It's a good move there by Spanish Fork. This one a rope out in the left field, right down that left field line. It will stay fair. Extra bases for Tegan Scott. It's going to be a two-run double for the number nine hitter in the Spanish Fork lineup as the, the bats come alive here in inning number two. A two-run, two-jacks double by Tegan Scott. And just like that, the Spanish Fork Dons take control of this game three to nothing. That's exactly what they needed after getting shut down pretty strongly in their uh, first matchup. Good job jumping out. Some good at-bats that we've seen here today so far. Deep count, swinging at good pitches. Uh, honestly, that's what I've seen so far. Just, they're just not really leaving the zone that much. So fantastic job there by Scott. You love to get that from your nine hitter. Oh, absolutely. It just it feels like they're just, just controlling the game a lot better um, in the batter's box than they did yesterday against Chase Johnson, which, I mean, uh, 
Johnston is one of the best yes. pitchers in all the states. So I mean, no no knocks there. I mean, he's oh, gonna yeah. he's gonna dictate the game <laughs> whenever yep. he's on the mound. But they're doing a, a nice job here on a. Uh, on Carter to really kind of get him into uncomfortable positions again. He's been living kind of outside and uh, hasn't quite been able to work both sides of the plate. And they've really kind of got a really good feel for him right now. And they've waited for pitches that they can rock. I mean, even as you mentioned, I mean, Marziel hit an absolute rope out to center field. Yep. And uh, so even even yep. their outs have been kind of loud. And yep. so it's, they're just they're just seeing the ball a whole lot better here today than they were seeing it on Monday. Yep. So digging back in here to get his second at bat is Nixon Warren. And he's 0 for 1 on the day, hoping to keep things rolling here in this second inning. A little bit inside for ball one. Scott picks up his fourth and fifth RBIs on the two out double. Now over at second base. And Warren did walk in his. First plate appearance, that's going to be a one-hopper right to Carter, who's just going to mosey his way on over to first base. Little toss over there to Chrisman, and that will end the inning. A big one here for Spanish Fork. Three runs coming across. An RBI single for Bryson Shipman, and then a big two-run double for Tegan Scott. Three-nothing ball game here between the Dons and the Golden Eagles. While we have some time in between the top and bottom of the innings. We'd like to thank our sponsors here at Spanish Fork 17. Mac, take it away for us. Yeah, of course. We've got on your screen there Lance Wilson State Farm, Two Jacks Pizza, Triple T Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, and MVP Sports. Thanks once again to our sponsors here at Spanish Fork 17. And, of course, remember that you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash Spanish Fork 17. Subscribe, like, comment, everything. <laughs> Stay in touch with what's going on in the community, both sports, uh, city events. We've got the whole variety for you that can be found on our YouTube channel. Give it a look. Yes, absolutely give it a look as we uh, are taking yet another look here at Riley Lampson getting warmed up here for inning number two. Was able to go one, two, three through the kind of more dangerous part of the the golden eagles lineup again getting chrisman out in any way is always a always a big thing for for anybody again he's just been so sensational this season cannot say enough things about side chrisman just having a, a brilliant season for maple mountain already on track pretty easily for a in all state nod and uh again another guy that we also brought up a little bit as well who probably will be coming up in this inning bennett averett having a a standout season in center field for the Golden Eagles really starting to, to see the pieces come together for him. And so it's, it's been just a really fun season here so far for the Golden Eagles. And they will start off with their cleanup hitter, Chase Johnston. It will be Johnston, Bringhurst, and Leifson do up here in the inning for Maple Mountain. The Golden Eagles haven't had to play from behind too much. They've been winning their games uh, pretty convincingly. So a bit of a challenge here. I'm sure uh, Coach Thomas would prefer to be leading but sometimes it's nice to give your team a challenge and a new situation that they'll have to work from every team needs to face adversity at some point as this one is sent high in the sky and uh first baseman will call everyone off and he will make the play there for out number one now batting for the eagles number 18 logan Bring her. And we'll bring up their third baseman, Logan Bringhurst, with one out in the bottom half of the second inning. He's another senior, has a 370 batting average. Like I mentioned, this is a pretty deep lineup. So he really can't take any time off for Lamson. Yeah, there's there's really not a lot of hitters here in, in this lineup that you can safely say, like, oh, yeah, this guy's going to be a, an easy out, as you will. Everybody is able to put some good contact on the ball and does a good job of getting themselves on base as that one's going to be tapped foul over towards the Maple Mountain dugout. We'll move the count now to 0 and 2 on Bringhurst. Bringhurst, a senior, plays third base, but also uh, can pitch. Another one slapped foul, will stay alive with the count staying at 0 and 2. Good bit of seniors on this uh, Maple Mountain team. It is a very veteran squad. These are guys that, uh, again, Tom, Coach Thomas has kind of had through the program through most of his times. That one is going to be just barely foul. That one lands just 
Ooh, man, like a couple of inches away from first yeah. base. But along with that, that veteran presence, there are still some, some younger guys that absolutely are contributing on this team. Again, just a very, very deep lineup and a deep rotation here for Coach Thomas. And that one is in there for strike three as Lampson finds the inside corner there on Bringhurst. Strikeout number two of the day for him. Yeah, Bringhurst just looking for something completely different there. That pitch was right down the middle. Easy call for home plate umpire. Doesn't bring it. Oh, sorry, Andrew. Yeah, you're Te good. Technically yep. the uh, second caught looking so yeah. far, yeah, although the first one was uh, yeah, a little interesting. So. Yeah, again, yeah, just catching, I guess, the, the blackest part of the black of the plate, as you will. <laughs> yep, yep. That one is going to be a little high there to shortstop Sawyer Leifson. Leifson hasn't had too much action so far this season, only four plate appearances, but uh, he figures to be getting a little bit more playing time here. The, uh, the junior, quite athletic, plays multiple sports. And again, um, has been getting quite a few starts at short here this season as a, it's kind of been a toss up between him and, and Colby Warren on, on most days, but uh, getting the start here today um, at short. Yeah, they have just they've been impressed with him and they've loved uh, the progress that uh, he's made over uh, the course of the season. Now one in there for a strike was absolutely taking all the way with the count three and oh now it'll move to three balls and one strike two outs here in the bottom of the second inning three nothing ball game. The three one from Lampson. <laughs> the, I think the Close. up maybe thought about that for a quick now little right, second but uh, Lampson will make his way over to first base. That's the first walk of the day for Riley Lampson, and it will bring up Braden Catterson, the uh, catcher today for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, the interesting thing with Lampson is he has quite an upright delivery. I mean, if you're looking at a 12-hour uh, clock, he's got his hand just at about 12 o'clock when he releases the ball, maybe, maybe 11.30 or so. Yeah, it ain't by much as that one no. just barely clips the, the lower part of the strike zone for strike one there to Catterson. And I, I just, you know, especially at this age in high school, different release points can definitely mess you up. I mean, that's why left-handed pitchers do so well at this age, uh, even against right-handed batters. That one also clips the strike zone, so early 0-2 hole here on Catterson. Runner on first with two outs in the bottom of the second inning. Three runs coming across for Spanish Fork in the top half of the inning, so a three-run lead for the Dons. The 0-2 in the dirt. Count now one and two. Bennett Averett on deck here for Maple Mountain. Should Carson find his way on base? Leifson at first after taking the two-out walk. The one-two, nice job by Nielsen to stay in front of that one. Leaving the count at two and two. Gatterson's got four RBIs on this season. A double. Five hits. He'll watch a pitch and it'll be outside and uh, basically no contest there as uh, yep. Lafson will just make his way on over to second base. The delayed steal, that's one thing I know that Coach Thomas really loves to catch defenses off guard. Everybody's always so used to a runner taking off right as the pitcher starts his motion, but in this case, you start running right when the ball is caught by the catcher. A 3-2 pitch will also just barely miss. Lampson was a non, none too pleased with that particular call as that will be a second walk issued here. Back-to-back -back walks here in this second inning. So they do bring in a, a speed up runner for the catcher. It's uh, Cole Erickson that is a coming into speed up run there for Catterson. Hey. 
And he does bring up the, the red hot Bennett Averett again, just a, a sensational season so far for the Golden Eagles center fielder, senior year, really showing out here. Again, excellent batting average. Two home runs on the season. Really just feels like things are starting to come together for him, which has uh, just got to be just a, a pleasure to see for Coach Thomas. Yeah, 481 batting average. He's got two home runs compared to Chrisman's three. They've got the only homers on the team this year. Wind has now switched directions a little bit. Yeah, it has. Runners showed there, but uh, they'll, they'll make their way back, and that will be a called for strike on Averitt. So it could be a bit unfortunate for Averitt now. I, I don't know that the ball would travel in left field as it might have been an inning ago, but he's got some pop, so it may not matter. It does, and it's kind of like weirdly adjusting too. So it's like there's moments where it's like straight across, yeah. but then there's other moments where it is almost blowing out, almost directly out to left. But he's going to get well underneath that one, kind of out there into shallow. Trouble. Right field is going to get up and over the right fielder set. So that's going to be the first run of the ball game scoring here for Maple Mountain. And Avery will find his way to second base. Yeah, well, we were just talking about the wind swirling a little bit. I don't know if that played a role in it. Certainly feels like it did. Marzial in right field just overran it. Honestly, it never never really looked like he had a good read on the ball. Yeah, it definitely looked lost as it just kind of traveled up and over his head. And on a, a shallow one like that, like he, I mean, ran in far enough to get it, but it just kind of traveled a little bit further than he was anticipating. And so it ends up being a, an RBI hit there for Bennett Averett, who scores um, Leifson on the play. And Erickson now over there at third base. And... Uh, the tying runs in scoring position here. So, again, three runs coming across in the top half of this inning for Spanish Fork. But Maple Mountain certainly threatening here with uh, Colby Warren up at the plate in the count 1-0. and oh. Colby Warren in the nine spot has 12 RBIs this year. So he's up the leaderboards on the team. So he's had his share of clutch moments in this season, even batting lower in the order. So yeah, not that's, bad bat to have. That is something to note. Um, Colby Warren for a lot. I, I, like a good portion of this season was was batting second wow. in this lineup. So he's usually batting right in between Thomas and, and Chrisman. And so he's 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 seen his his fair amount of uh, of, of plate appearances and has done a good job. But uh, they felt like putting him down in that nine spot to kind of lengthen things out a little bit. So that's an excellent uh, change up there from Lampson to to get that call the first strike here. And uh, this at bat the count now three and one. He's going to swing at one up at his eyeballs for strike two. Again, having Max Walker back and in the lineup really, I think, just adds a little bit of extra oomph to this Golden Eagles lineup that already was well balanced. The uh, payoff pitch here is going to be, once again, nice and high. Warren does a good job of holding off on this one. And uh, a little bit of a wild inning here for... Riley Lampson is now he's walked three guys here in this inning and the bases are loaded here and it's going to be at bat number two for AJ Thomas. Thomas continuing to come into his own. He's a junior leading off. Got a 289 batting average, but doing what you want a leadoff batter to do, he's got 14 runs scored. That leads the team. He's going to pop this one foul. It'll be up in out of the way, so it'll be a, a first pitch strike there for Lamson. Yeah, big situation here for the Golden Eagles. Able to respond a little bit already with the the RBI hit by, by Bennett Averitt. But now a, a bases loaded situation with one of your better hitters, A.J. Thomas, up and a, a good base knock potentially tying this ball game. He'll be in the dirt. He'll get past Nielsen just enough for Erickson to make his way on home. And just like that, a little bit of a pass ball there past Nielsen. And it's now just a one-run ball game here, 3-2. That was a great jump on third. And that's Cole Erickson, who is the uh, speed-up runner just right as soon as that ball hits the dirt, he goes, and that's always a big key. You can't be indecisive in those situations. He went for it. It was a close play. It good, was good close. Good, good attempt there for like, for uh, the Dons. I think they were thinking that it was going to get a little bit further away from, from Nielsen. He did a good job of reacting to that and getting to that pretty quickly, but uh, 
Yeah, if Erickson doesn't fully commit to that, he's probably out there. As that's going to be a slow tapper right over to third base. Nice uh, no-glove play there by the coach. <laughs> yep. Can't we'll move to one ball and two strikes. I, one of the things I heard before that wild pitch, I heard Coach Thomas yelling uh, at his base runners to get a good jump off the bat. And that one wasn't off the bat, but I'm sure that probably was a, a better secondary lead than maybe we were seeing. So good job looking ahead there from Skip. The one, two to Thomas. And almost essentially the same spot he got rung up on in the, in the first inning, but uh, goes his way this time. The count moves to two and two. Yeah, it seems like the umpire... Uh, Again, just assuming it was off the plate, he, he yeah. made the adjustment. He, yeah, he's he closed the door just a little bit on that outside part of the plate. Yes, tighten things up just a tick over there. And that'll be a, a swing at one in the dirt as Thomas will run on over to first base. But it'll be play with made over there, and that will be the end of the inning. Stranding two runners on, but getting two runners across and cutting into this lead. The score now 3-2. to two. We'll get you inning number three when we come back on Spanish Fork 17. For surprisingly great rates, contact your local State Farm agent today. Contact State Farm agent Lance Wilson today. Hi, welcome to Two Jacks Pizza. For the best pizza you'll ever taste and our world-famous cheese sticks, come to Two Jacks Pizza on Main Street in Spanish Fork or call us for a quick delivery. Are you hungry yet? Welcome back to Spanish Fork 17, inning number three of this one between Crosstown Rivals, Spanish Fork Dons, and Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. Second game of a two-game matchup. Again, this is the opening series of region play for both teams. Maple Mountain taking the first game on Monday, 8-1. to one. And uh, the Dons set up for revenge here so far here after two innings. The score is 3-2, three, three runs coming across for Spanish Fork. And uh, Maple Mountain rallying to get two in the bottom half of the inning and uh, the Dons hoping to hang on to things here and hopefully extend this lead in inning number three. They will bring up batters two, three, and four here in inning number three. Riley Lampson, Will Dart, and Cal Nielsen. And that is gonna hit Lampson right above his elbow. Well, it's the danger of going inside. I know I've talked about wanting six. to see Carter just challenge the hitters inside a little bit more but that's the danger especially in high school is you might give up some uh, some free passes as there's the uh, speed up runner it looked like that was uh, boston duvall i believe who was at first yeah again wanting to preserve their pitcher lampson's legs and keep him keep him healthy and not on the base pass yeah the uh positive for Spanish Fork. I mean, obviously they're winning, so that's a positive. But then the other side of it is they had three hits that uh, drove in those three runs. Maple Mountain kind of more gifted those runs in that last inning. There's a strike. And honestly, I mean, it's a hit that they gave to Averett. And it was, uh, you know, could kind of go either way. You know, the whole, if you get a glove on it or not thing. But uh, Spanish Fork had some good contact. Yeah, Spanish Fork has definitely hit some, hit a few on the screws, as you will, and uh, even even some of the outs have been loud. And uh, yeah, it, it's just it's looked a little bit more uh, like their offense is in sync, whereas it felt like last inning it was more. Riley Lampson was just kind of off. I mean, issues three walks and just uh, just kind of felt like he was out of rhythm. And uh, they were able to capitalize on again a little bit of a fluky play out there in right field, but. Uh, Again, uh, tip of the cap to the Golden Eagles in that sense, though. That's what winning teams do is uh, take advantage of those uh, those miscues, and they were able to do that and cut into the lead as the count is now 3-1 and one on Will Dart. Huge pitch right here. Ooh. Oh, and that's a beauty from Carter. That's going to be strike two. Both both uh, strikes here in this at-bat have just been absolute dandies. Just uh Beautiful breaking pitches that have either clipped the inside part of the zone or just barely uh, kind of clipping the bottom half of the strike zone. Payoff pitch up coming here to Dart, and he puts a charge in this one out into right field. Johnston will call everyone off and will make the play out there for out number one. Yeah, I couldn't tell. It looked like that was the same pitch as the one before. Uh, not quite sure. It looked like a little bit of off speed, which I think was a good call in that case. Uh, I know we talked earlier about 
throwing the same pitch twice. But in that case, the pitch before really seemed to kind of fool the hitter in a hitter's count. So I think it was a good decision going back to it there. Quick throw over to first base. They want to keep things honest over there with uh, Duvall at first base. It'll be a 1-0 count now on cleanup hitter Cal Nielsen, who roped a double in his first at bat. It's a one for one on the day. And he's going to send one high out into kind of shallow, I say shallow center, but still technically even on the infield dirt, and the play will be made there for out number two. That'll be made by Leifson on the uh, second baseman side of, of second base. Two outs now in the top of the third, so so far not too bad here from Carter. Did plunk Lamps in to start things off here in this inning, but now two quick outs, and number five hitter Jackson Sorensen now up for Spanish Fork. Woo. Big swing there and miss for, uh, for strike one. Yeah, this is a great showing here, the last few batters from uh, Carter. Uh, that you know, I kind of mentioned there was a big pitch coming there on 3-1, but he dropped the off speed in there for a strike, then gets the fly out and then a quick pop out. And uh, just like that, you know, can calm a pitcher down. And they're going to make the throw over to second base and he's going to end up dragging Leifson just far enough away that it's going to go as a stolen base there for Duvall. It was nice pop-up time there by, by Nielsen, but just a little bit off on the throw. Yeah, they had him uh, just, yeah, throw well, not Nielsen, there. my apologies. That's uh, Catterson for right. the Golden Eagles. At least this time I got the I got the name. Uh, like a, <laughs> it, it was a catcher. Um, I've been kind of off there on catchers. My, my apologies this season, folks. But, yeah, Catterson with a nice pop-up time, but a little bit of a drift there on the throw, and that one is going to be – Low and in the dirt there to Sorensen. So the count now is one ball and two strikes. Another guy with a, a big wide stance on that uh, that two strike approach. He's going to slap one over to second. Warren will make the play, and that will be the end of the top of the third. Is uh, again allowing just one base runner and the strands him over there at second base. So a nice inning there by Blake Carter to kind of. That by, by Bradley Lane, uh, yeah, Blake Carter to simmer things down. And as we move on over to the bottom half of the third inning, gives us an opportunity to thank our sponsors here at Spanish Fork 17. That's Two Jacks Pizza, MVP Sports, Triple T, Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, and Lance Wilson State Farm. As you can see, we've got a broadcast coming up on Friday, April 19th at 3.30 p.m. It's going to be the Cedar Valley Aviators. Taking on the same Maple Mountain Golden Eagles here at Maple Mountain. Again, catch that on Spanish Fork 17 Friday, April 19th at 3.30 p.m. Again, the Aviators kind of floating around the kind of the same area as Spanish Fork this year. I'm kind of hovering around the... Uh, oh, as we get a nice view here of the sky. Looks like we've... Uh, oh, I love that. Oh, wow. Some good work there, picking that one up. Yeah, great, great camera work here by our crew. We always, we always love the work of the the Spanish Fork 17 crew being able to get some some really fun shots. And that one is a that one's a beauty out there. Yeah, it's that clear of a day right now. And uh, I was gonna say not a cloud in the sky, but I see one right behind the <laughs> mountain over there. One, so one singular just literally cloud. one. You can see it on your screen right there. That pesky <laughs> cloud just ruined my day. So. <laughs> But other, other than that cloud, really, really beautiful day. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. I got to break out the short sleeves today. I am, I am so excited about that. The next couple days are just going to be absolutely gorgeous. There's the view of that one cloud <laughs> up, over by the, up over by the peak of the mountain. It is literally just the one singular one that's out there today. So he's, he's holding out strong, but uh, eventually he's going to be blown away. It'll be completely clear skies here. Big swing. And miss there to start things off here in inning number three. Max Walker, Cy Crispin, and Chase Johnston do appear two, three, and four in the lineup for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, Walker, uh, easy ground out to second. And this that one's going to be a loud one right in between the shortstop <laughs> and third baseman for a clean base hit here to start things off in inning number three. Now batting for yeah, Lamson, uh, really no issues with the top part of the order in the first inning, so change there. Yeah, nice job by Walker, just poking one through. 
And that's going to bring up the ever dangerous Cy Chrisman, who uh, <laughs> had two very loud strikes um, in his in his first at bat. Hit one that was just just barely foul, um, but easily yeah. cleared the fence. And then another one that he definitely was quite early on. But uh, yeah, the big power hitting first baseman definitely showing off that power, and he's going to rip one down the alley. And it's going to drop down for yet another base hit. So back-to-back -back singles here in the bottom of the third for the Golden Eagles off their two and three hitters. Got to admit, I don't know that that was the best read there in left field. Uh, that's uh, Sorensen in left. But at the same time, I can't, I can't blame him. I mean, you're going to be playing pretty deep there. And uh, that one was kind of off the end of the bat. Didn't travel as far as it maybe looked at first. But, yeah, not... I don't know. Thought maybe there was a chance to catch that one. But. Yeah, I kind of thought so too. But I, but to your point there, Mac, I do think that one hit the the end of the bat. It looked like I mean it was a beautiful yeah. swing from Chrisman. But yeah, as uh, Johnston is going to show bunt here, and he's going to lay one right down the line. A good play by by Bringhurst to collect that in and uh, get the out over there at uh, at first base. But uh, man, I. That was, that was a pretty well-placed bunt there by Johnston. It was, and I think what was now interesting was, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a tough decision, but it looked like it was maybe going to go foul. Yeah, um, but, I, I mean, it's thought a, that too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough call for the third baseman there, and that's uh, Anderson at third who, uh, you know, made the decision, and, and they get the out. That's the important thing, but I, I wonder, you know, do you let that one go? Do you just try to get the out? I don't know. I, I don't know that I have an opinion on it, but yeah, tough decision. Yeah, I mean, you, in, in that case, you're, you're right there. You can make the play, so why not just go ahead and, and grab the out? Right. Um, I, I guess, I mean, it, it just kind of works out that way that it was an easy enough bang-bang play to just ensure that you get the out. But, I mean, it does put runners in scoring position with just one out, and uh, you got a pretty dangerous hitter up now in Logan Bringhurst. He's going to take a big, healthy cut at that one, and it'll even the count at one and one. Walker getting a really aggressive secondary lead at third, trying to draw the eye of Lampson. Walker at third and Chrisman at second base. So two runners in scoring position, 3-2 ball game. And uh, another bunt is shown here. And he's oh, going to wow. lace one beautifully down the third baseline. And that's going to be an easy sacrifice bunt there for Logan Bringhurst. It does not get any prettier than that one. And that's going to tie this ball game up. Wow, what a call right there. I mean, that... And a great bunt. Uh, I mean, we've seen some great bunts so far in this game from both sides, and that's exactly where you want it, just to the right of the pitcher, distance for the third baseman to cover. That one was, I mean, that one, that one wasn't even close. There was no chance to get the out at home. Yeah, it, I, it very much caught everyone off guard, and so they just were not prepared for it, and then he just lays down in beauty. So we got a tie ball game here in Maple Mountain, 3-3 now after the RBI sacrifice bunt. By Logan Bringhurst, that'll be a first pitch strike into Sawyer Leifson. A little surprising, maybe a little different than we'd expect. You'd think Spanish Fork would be the one having to kind of manufacture the runs a little bit, but it's actually Maple Mountain who's been scoring on some, some interesting moves. Big swing there at uh, breaking pitch. We'll move the count now to 0 and 2. It's been at least a couple of sacrifice bunts, a wild pitch, um, a, you know, kind of a interesting base hit in right field mm -hmm. that scored a run. That one high and outside. Scout moves to one ball and two strikes. Chrisman at third base, hoping to be the run that will give Maple Mountain their first lead in this ball game. The one, two to Leifson, well outside. Evens up the count at two and two. Leifson scored in the second inning. Ending up Scoring off of the RBI single by, oh my, the RBI he hit there by, by Avers. That one's going to get away from Nielsen, but uh, keep things here rolling with a full count. Full count here in the bottom of the third. Two outs. Time ball game. Big situation still with the runner on third. Leifson pokes this thing into shallow center field, and it's going to be down for an RBI base hit for the Golden Eagles shortstop. And 
Now Maple Mountain with the lead here in, in this third inning as they match their run total from inning number two and take the lead here four to three. I really love that hit. It was on the outside corner, trying to be a little defensive in a full count, but just poked it up the middle. I, I think a lot of people want to say that baseball is just, it's all random and who knows what happens off the, off of a bat, but that was intentional right there for Leifs and just poked at it, trying to get it up the middle. And this one crushed out into left center field by Braden Catterson. You can kiss that thing goodbye. Two run home run for the catcher Braden Catterson and it's pouring now for the Golden Eagles. Two run blast by their catcher Braden Catterson. They're gonna take the lead here now with a little bit of insurance after the two run blast. It's gonna be a 6-3 a ball game after that one. Patterson just a straight up ambush right there. You know, the Dons were very close to just getting out of this inning with minimal damage. It was just gonna be a tied ball game. And uh, Leifson, credit to him for, like I mentioned, I don't know that I'd call it a bloop, but it wasn't the hardest hit ball, just put in the right spot. And then Catterson just sitting heater on the first pitch, just absolutely jumps the fastball from Lamson, crushing it out to left center. Yeah, just a blast there from from Catterson. Absolutely see, love seeing that. He's a, he's had his struggles in, in the batter's box, and it's it's just it's been so good to see him evolve as a catcher and just what he brings behind the dish. But when he can provide you something like that, give you a two-run home run, oh man, he just becomes so valuable. And so, six-three ball game now after the big two-run shot by Braden Catterson, an 0-1 count now to. Bennett Averitt, he's going to watch a pitch that's going to go outside. It'll be now one ball and one strike. That's Catterson's first home run of the season. He now joins the likes of Bennett Averitt right here. And then uh, also, of course, Chrisman, who has three on the air. Averitt with two, and now uh, Catterson with one. Yeah, and that was a pitch that just clips that outside part of the plate. So one, two count now on the Golden Eagles center fielder. Still with two outs here in this third inning as that's going to be a, a ball that's going to literally dribble right at our feet um, and then hit the fence as uh, we'll move the count to two balls and two strikes yeah two sacrifice bunts the only outs here in this inning so far four runs coming across and Averitt's going to turn on that one it's going to be out towards foul territory and the play will be made out there for out number three, big inning here for the Golden Eagles. Four runs coming across, capped off by a two-run blast by Braden Catterson. 6-3 ball game between the Golden Eagles and the Dons. We'll get you inning number four when we come back on Spanish Fork 17. If you're looking for a workout, you know MVP Sports is the place to start, and that includes pickleball. MVP Sports has all you need to get active in this growing sport. Paddles, shoes, clothing, and the pickleballs. MVP Sports in Spanish Fork. The best time to check your furnace is before it fails, and you can rely on Triple T to do the job right. Our technicians are trained every year so you can sleep better at night, knowing your furnace is safe to operate. Call Triple T at 798-7711 to schedule your tune-up today. Welcome back to Spanish Fork 17. It is inning number four of this one between the Spanish Fork Dons and the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles at Maple Mountain High School. And it is the Golden Eagles who are soaring now in this one. The score six to three, a big four run inning for them in the bottom half of the third inning. A couple sacrifice bunts that were just absolutely gorgeous. And then a big two run blast by their catcher, Braden Catterson, to really cap things off. So a three run lead for Maple Mountain and Blake Carter getting warmed up here for a fourth inning of work for the Golden Eagles really just just kind of one blip so far for him a, a rough second inning that he gave up three runs otherwise a zero in the first and a zero in the third so uh, hoping to put up yet another zero here and uh, hopefully it's uh, not going to be a you know even odd pattern thing here and he can just kind of lock in here in inning number four yeah that last inning will make Carter feel a lot better got a three run lead now just one bad inning just you know, had kind of lost the feel for it in that second inning, got into some hitters counts. Looked a lot better in the third. It's batter six, seven, and eight in the order here for the Dons in inning number four. Brecken Anderson will watch that uh, first pitch 
hop in the dirt and to hit the backstop for ball one. Brecken Anderson, Cal Marziel, and Bryson Shipman do up here in this inning for Spanish Fork. Anderson dropped a uh, sacrifice bunt his first time up. Great bunt. We've seen a few of those today. Yeah, it's a, it's been a fun day for small ball. <laughs> And then you mix that in with a two-run home run by uh, by Catterson. It's just a, just a really fun ball game. As this one is sprayed out into foul territory out there in right field, it will fall harmlessly out of play. There's a lot of room in foul territory over here in this ballpark at Maple Mountain, uh, and they have to go over you know some of the ground rules as well uh, because there's you know limited fencing down the sides and yeah, just a lot of room. So anything hit in the air, there's a good chance it might be caught. And this one, a rocket out into right center. Averett lays oh. out for it and makes oh. the web gem play. Oh, my goodness. Bennett Averett lays out for a fantastic catch out in center field. What a play for the Golden Eagles center fielder. <laughs> that is Clark Kent out there in center field. Goodness gracious. Wow. That was not one of those cheapy dives, you know, where you time it up. That was full extension. And if he doesn't get that, might be a triple. Yeah, that absolutely sensational play out there by Averett. Again, I've been saying all season long, he's just been absolutely showing out. The The skill set has always been there out in center field, but it just feels like it's just everything has come together here his senior year. Threw an absolute frozen rope to home on a play that uh, it normally would have been a sacrifice fly, but uh, just great arm strength out there. And now absolutely laying out for, for that one. And again, the bat really waking up here this season for him too just a, a standout senior season for their senior center fielder bennett averett as uh, the count here is two and one on cal marziel with one out here in the top of the fourth so much that has to come together on a catch like that you got to have a great jump i mean i gotta be honest off the bat i thought for sure gapper mm -hmm. no chance yep. i mean if anything i thought johnston maybe had the chance but Averett showing that closing speed. Oh, golly, what a pitch there from Blake Carter. Catches that inside part of the plate on Cal Marziel. That's uh, just his first strikeout of the day, but it'll be out number two here in the top of the fourth. Yeah, like I mentioned, Carter is not really someone who's going to rack up the Ks, but if the defense is playing great, which we just saw some I mean, great... <laughs> play right Exhibit there. A. <laughs> yep, and uh, really they have done solid, uh, everyone on uh, routine plays, on some above average plays, so that's what you need when you have uh, Carter on the mound. Yeah, Cal 1-0 here now on Bryson Shipman, the first baseman here today for Spanish Fork. He'll watch a pitch on the inside corner as that's really working for Carter right now. Looks like, I don't know, is it, that's a change up or something, but it's it's uh, really fooling the batters right now, and it looks like he's got the feel for it right now here in this fourth inning. Yeah, I really felt like he kind of got a feel for it there in that, that third inning, was uh, kind of toying with that pitch a little bit with, with Dart um, early on in that particular bat and then was pumping him outside. But, uh, yeah, something about that pitch is is really working for him right now as the count moves to two and one after that one. But, uh, yeah, absolutely just rung up Marziel on a, on a beautiful one and then getting Shipman to look at one too. So uh, now finally starting to better establish, like you said, Mac really getting that inside part of the plate a little bit more as he goes right back to that. Well, this one, a fastball, though, mm -hmm. gets him to swing and miss two and two combination as old as time in baseball the change up and then the uh the high fastball Woo! gets a swing and a miss there too for strikeout number two so back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the top of the fourth inning so an excellent one two three inning there by blake carter after a big offensive explosion in the bottom half does his job to get a nice shutdown inning Score stays 6-3 as we move on over to the bottom half of the fourth. It gives us an opportunity to thank our sponsors here at Spanish Fork 17. Mac, hit us up with those. Yes, we've got Triple T Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, MVP Sports, Lance Wilson State Farm, and Two Jacks Pizza, of course. Big thanks to our sponsors here at Spanish Fork 17. We're back to what is a just beautiful day out here. It's been a real nice week weather-wise. Maybe started off a little cold, but... Springtime is 
is near. I guess it's is spring it here? is it is here. here it actually. is officially yeah. here on Spanish Fork 17, yeah. and also <laughs> everywhere else in Utah. But um, yeah, it's it's been so sensational today in particular. Just absolutely gorgeous weather. We're up in the 60s at this point. The next couple of days also set into trend to be up in the high 60s, low 70s. I mean, this this is beautiful and perfect baseball weather. So we are so excited that uh, we're finally getting into things here. Nice view of uh, again a little bit of wind today here too. So you're seeing the 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 turbines going a little bit there. The not quite as crazy as they've been in the past. We've had some really blustery days, yeah, <laughs> some yeah. blustery games here early uh, on in the season. Oh my gosh, down in down in St. George, mm. wow, we had some games <laughs> where the, the uh, it felt like gale force winds sometimes, just <laughs> absolutely crazy. So I appreciate a little bit of less, but a nice little breeze, nothing crazy, kind of. And again, now it's yeah. just barely rocking the flag out there, out in out in left field. So things yeah. are starting to calm down a little bit. Uh, uh, the the snow capped mountains are starting to you know see a little bit less white and uh, you just kind of smell that spring is in the air and it's it's absolutely fantastic as uh, we're getting ready here for the bottom half of the fourth inning and uh, we do have a new pitcher on the mound here for Spanish Fork getting warmed up here so Riley Lampson out of the game at this point after three innings of work yeah. was uh, again that that lasting in particular a rough one for Lampson. Seeing a couple of sacrifice bunts and then allowing that two-run home run to Braden Catterson. So Lampson all done yeah. for the day. And in relief here for the uh, the Dons, that is uh, number three, Cal Marziale. Yeah. Yeah, Marziel comes in with a 4.77 ERA. He's had three appearances on the season. He's got seven strikeouts and eight walks. He's allowed five earned runs and seven and a third innings pitched. A guy that uh, often has, uh, and again, this has come in a few times here in relief so far on the season for Spanish Fork. He'll be dealing with Colby Warren and then back to the top of the order for the Golden Eagles. In uh, A.J. Thomas and Max Walker, it'll be a first pitch strike to the Golden Eagles' second baseman. Marziel just uh, going, going right after things. He'll throw a curveball in the dirt. And even the count at one and one. Hides that ball behind him for a little while. Tied to his hip, right hip. This one a uh, foul ball, just a, a tick to our left. And, uh, move the count to one and two. Well, that's what the dugout, they'll tell you after that, that you're right on it. When you foul a ball off, that goes right behind you. So the timing's there. Marzial, he, uh, he uh, dropped a curveball. On the second pitch, wasn't too bad. Maybe just a little short. Mm -hmm. See if maybe he goes back to that here. Yeah, certainly a weapon for him. The one-two to Warren is going to be a tapper over towards oh. short, and that was just that's just a tough read yep. there for for Will Dart. So that will squeak past him out into center field. It'll be a lead-off single here for Colby Warren. That was a high chopper. And yeah, just a just a tough one. He's got to go up and play it like he did there. There's no way that you're going to get Warren if you play that on your heels. Yep. And did, did the best he could there. That's that's one of them them seeing eye singles that just kind of finds its way out there out into the outfield. So uh, a nice day at the plate so far for number nine hitter Kobe Warren's taking a walk and singled here today. They are also a little bit worried about him on the base pass. Again, he's got some some great speed as well. So they do throw it on over to first after that uh, first pitch ball to A.J. Thomas. Six stolen bases for Warren on the season, and they've been pretty aggressive so far. They called the delayed steal earlier. I would not be shocked at all to see some movement, although you got the top of the order now. So maybe going to allow some freedom for your best hitters here for the Golden Eagles and then maybe with two outs play around with the base running. A 2-0 count here to Thomas and uh, you say that and then yeah, Warren gets up on well, his horse and was uh, <laughs> on over uh, out there oh, in wow. oh, out there in foul territory. Shipman tries to lay out for that thing just gets a little bit past him so it'll fall onto the grass and it'll move the count to two balls and one strike. Is, like I mentioned there's a lot of room out in foul territory and we most of the time think that is an advantage for the defense, and, and it typically is, but one thing to keep in mind is a lot of times these infielders and outfielders, they're, they're not as used to having this much ground to cover and this much space. Oh, good read. Yeah, excellent read there. Warren oh. already was uh, kind of 
was almost halfway to second base already, and then it just squeaks past Nielsen, so it ends up being a fairly easy one there for Warren to get himself into scoring position. And a nice screen from the home plate umpire there to <laughs> remove any doubt on that one. That was That's about as long as I've seen a catcher and umpire tangled up with each other. Yeah, beautiful uh, beautiful pick there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, his, uh, his basketball coach will be proud of him as that's a chopper that uh, – will end up being foul. It's still a nice play over there at third by Bringhurst, but uh, yeah, yeah, ends up being in foul territory. So we'll make uh, Thomas run back over to the batter's box and uh, dig back in with the count full. Oh, one thing about Thomas is we know that he has some pop. He has not seen that quite yet this year. No home runs, but he has the power to do it, which maybe surprises some people, but it's in there. The 3-2, a chopper back over to Bringhurst. He'll throw it across the diamond, and the play will be made for out number one in the inning. Good job. Looking at the, looking back the runner at second, Warren, keeping him there. Yeah, excellent play there by Bringhurst. Yeah, again, just, just enough of a glance over there at second base to uh, keep Warren over there. So one out with a runner on second. So in scoring position, and number two hitter Max Walker up one for two on the day. He had a single in that big third inning and uh, ended up scoring. So one of, of six Golden Eagles to score in this ball game, and he'll uh, watch that first pitch ball. So the count one and O oh on the... Golden Eagles left fielder. That one will be low. And the count will move to two balls and no strikes. Danger lurking in the form of number 12, Chrisman on the on deck circle, a 2 0 count. Yeah, Walker and Chrisman start things off in the third inning with back to back singles. And this one's going to be laced past the first baseman out into shallow right field for a base hit. They send Warren on home, and uh, that'll be an easy RBI single there for Max Walker. Now two for three on the day, and a very productive day at the plate for number two hitter Max Walker. Just another great job, like we saw with Leifson poking the ball the other way. We've seen a lot from Spanish Fork on that outside edge, and you'll see that in high school in these younger ages that Pitchers are a little more reluctant to go inside for fear of hitting batters. So if you want to have success as a hitter in high school, you've got to be able to poke that ball the other way. Chrisman will watch one go low and inside for ball one. Chrisman on the day is one for two. A ground out to short and then a single there in that third inning, a rope out to left field. 1-0, just a tick high. It'll move the count now to two balls and no strikes. Walker at first base after the RBI single to get the scoring rolling here in inning number four, extending Maple Mountain's lead now to 7-3. Crispin gets into one. That's going to be driven out into center field, and that one is gone. Home run number four on the season for big slugger Cy Crispin. A second two-run blast here in this ball game as that thing just kept on going. An absolute rope up and over the center field fence to score now 9-3 to three after a big two-run blast from their big first baseman, Cy Chrisman. I got to be honest, I did not think he got that one off the bat. I didn't I, either. I, I thought that was a bit more of a jam shot maybe, you know, but... That's just a true sign of a power hitter is even when it, they don't hit the sweet spot of the bat, the ball still flies. And, you know, maybe some wind aid there. It's definitely blowing it out blowing to left. a little bit out there in left, left center. center. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it still takes a big man to get the ball out of here in any condition. And, uh, well, what can you say about Chrisman? His that hasn't already run. been said. I yeah, mean, exactly. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's uh, just absolutely phenomenal this year. Yep. Fourth home run on the season. Big two for three day for the, the big slugging first baseman. Cleanup hitter Chase Johnston now up 0 for 1 on the day. He'll take a big swing at that one. He'll move the count to no balls and two strikes. He uh, popped up to first base in his first at bat and then laid down a beautiful sacrifice bunt in uh, his uh, second plate appearance. The 0-2 will be outside, so now one ball and two strikes. The uh, home run ball looks like it has, it has been uh, acquired. By, it does, uh, yes. Maybe a young fan out in left center. Johnson takes a big old swing at that one for 
Strike three, second out of the inning here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And it'll bring up their number five hitter, Logan Bringhurst. 0 for 1 on the day, a strikeout in the second. And uh, he also laid down a beautiful sacrifice bunt, that one scoring a run in the third inning. Bringhurst will watch one that goes in on his hands for ball one. Three runs across here in the bottom half of the fourth inning as Maple Mountain really starting to, to see the offense pouring in here in these last couple of innings. Two in the second, four in the third, and now three in the fourth. A 9-3 ball game, big six-run lead here for them against crosstown rivals Spanish Fork. Two outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Third baseman Logan Bringhurst up, and he's going to send one over towards second base. It will be collected, and that will be out number three in the inning. Three runs across here for Maple Mountain, capped off by a big two-run home run by Cy Crispin. 9-3 right. ball game between the Golden Eagles and the Dons. We'll get you inning number five when we come back on Spanish Fork 17. surprisingly great rates contact your local state farm agent today contact state farm agent lance wilson today hi welcome to two jacks pizza for the best pizza you'll ever taste and our world famous cheese sticks come to two jacks pizza on main street in spanish fork or call us for a quick delivery are you hungry yet Welcome back to Spanish Fork 17, inning number five of this one between the Spanish Fork Zons and the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. And uh, this is, again, first series for these guys in Region 7 play. Maple Mountain taking game one of this series, 8-1 on Monday and trending towards another victory here today. The score, 9-3, to three big innings here in the last couple of innings, two, four, and three coming across in the last three innings as uh, the... Uh, Getting the infield dirt all nice and uh, graded out and getting all nice and even. Nice view of uh, the uh, maintenance here at uh, the Golden Eagles field. You know, it's maybe a small thing to some, but major credit to Coach Thomas and uh, his team who have taken great care with this field. I've seen some improvements made to it. Just looks wonderful on a day like today. and. Uh, I know it took a lot of work. I've seen some of that firsthand, some of the work that they've had to put in, and uh, it's really great. And not everything is just about the team. When you're a coach, it's also about uh, where you play and taking good care of the field that you're on. Cleanliness is, is next to godliness is, I guess, the, the phrase. And you want a nice, clean ballpark. And uh, you can put yourself in a good environment, get yourself in a good headspace, too, when you've got a, a nice, clean-looking field. As uh, the count, one and one on Scott. And he's going to lace one right down that third base line. That's going to be extra bases for the number nine hitter, Tegan Scott, who's already got a two-jacks double on the day. And now he's going to make it two, make it double, as you will. Two doubles on the day for Tegan Scott, and that's a great way to start off this fifth inning for the Dons. We've had, I think that's the third double just it kind is. of laced right over third base for the Dons. So uh, after a little bit of stagnation on offense, a quick little double to start things off and then get to the top of the order. Yeah, this, this is a... Uh... I mean, obviously every moment is big, but I mean, after allowing, you know, you were up three nothing in this ball game after those three runs in the second inning, they chip away and get two in uh, the bottom half of the inning. And then just uh, the offensive explosion here for the Golden Eagles. And so anything the Dons can do to get things rolling on offense and try to cut into this lead is, uh, is a big deal as that one is fouled away by Warren and the count moves to Oh and one, but uh, yeah, nice, nice way to start things off here. Tegan Scott with the the leadoff double, and then you really get your your best hitters up, and that's exactly what you want to see if you're the Dons. A nice rope out in the left field there by Nixon Warren, and he will get the Dons back on the scoreboard here. The score now nine to four after the RBI single by Nixon Warren. It's just what the doctor ordered. We're only a few pitches into this inning, and already a run comes in. Nobody out top of the order now look maple mountain has solid pitching up and down uh, their roster but the bullpen has its spots that you can get and uh that, that move's going to be made right now i wasn't sure if they were going to pull them out already but 
Coach Thomas does make the move. A great showing by Blake, Blake Carter. Carter. Five good innings, four and, good, uh, innings, excuse me. good work there as we'll see who is uh, coming in now. This ended up being four runs given up by Blake Carter, charged with five hits on the day. Did strike out two and uh, did walk one and did uh, hit a batter. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, a decent uh, decent start there for Blake Carter. I mean, did did his job to keep them in this ball game, and then uh, the offense really came alive there in the last couple of innings to really take charge in this ball game. But uh, a quick hook here in the in the fourth inning and they do go to the bullpen here and that is going to be number 20 coming in here for the golden eagles that's brayden nuttle now in relief of blake carter well nuttle has been solid out of the bullpen he has put in six innings of work and only given up one run he's got eight strikeouts so i kind of talked about the bullpen and how you know maybe you can get to them a little bit uh but Mostly, uh, Nuttall has been a huge, huge piece of that bullpen, one of the better arms that they have, and he's hard to touch. He's got a really solid curveball, which he just threw right there in his warm-ups. And, uh, yeah, just a real solid arm out of the pen, and Coach Thomas is going to be asking for a little bit from him here, uh, maybe try to get a couple innings or so uh, before finishing this one off. Yeah, certainly your hope here, if you're Coach Thomas, is you can get potentially two innings here out of Nuttall and then uh, be able to, to go to someone else here probably for, for the seventh inning. But if he can uh, calm things down here and uh, limit the damage to just one run, that would be huge here for the Golden Eagles. But again, yeah, RBI single there from Nixon Warren ends up chasing... Um, wow. Ends up chasing Blake Carter, but then starting things off here a little bit rough is uh, that's going to be the, the second time in this game that Riley Lampson is going to get hit by a pitch. Yeah, just uh, yeah, seen that happen before many times in high school baseball. A new pitcher comes in and just kind of loses it on that first pitch, plunks the first batter, and yeah, a little bit of momentum here now for Spanish Fork. This is exactly what they needed. A rough start for Nuttall, and it's going to be runners on first and second for the ever-dangerous Will Dart here now for Spanish Fork. Uh, 0 for 2 on the day, a ground out and a fly out so far. That one is going to be very, very high, and uh, that'll be ball one there to the Spanish Fork shortstop. That's not going to make a coach feel good. First pitch, fastball just right into the batter, and then the next pitch, a curveball that's just floating up above the batter's head but there's a good comeback yeah that one that one a nice job of snapping into the strike zone first strike thrown here so far for Nuttall even the count at one and one on dart 9-4 ball game five run lead for the Golden Eagles over the Dons here on Spanish Fork 17 again inning number five of this one top half of the inning the Dons hoping to cut into this five run lead and losing the game on Monday to these Golden Eagles and hoping to exact some revenge here in game number two. That one is thrown into the dirt. That'll be a fairly easy advance for the runners. So a bit of a, a wild pitch there will move the runners into scoring position. Yeah, it's uh, might want to start be thinking ahead here and getting somebody warmed up. Uh, not a lot of command so far for Nuttall, which is not something that we have seen much from him so far this year, as he's been pretty solid out of the pin. He has been mostly nails so far as you were listing off the the stats there for him on the season as uh, Dart's going to send this one high in the sky out into foul territory. And, uh, oh, oh that's, a, that's a rough uh, <laughs> rough break there for uh, uh, that's, uh, that's Bringhurst over there who uh, – I was not quite able to track that one down. I was just about to say that was a gift from Spanish Fork there with Dart swinging on two and one and one on a pitch that looked like it was a bit high. And then the gift is re-gifted right back <laughs> as uh, uh, Maple Mountain can't come down with it. Uh, yeah, a couple of those today, one for each side. A little surprising what we've seen. Yeah, for the Dons, it was that one that was over over down the first baseline that uh, just kind of not read well, and then also a, a bit of a, a bunny out in right field that also was misread. As Dart will get a hold of that one, just crushes it out to left field on a rope, and unfortunately for him, that's mm, another that's just right. frozen rope thrown out there by the Golden Eagles outfield. This one, Max Walker throws in a strike into home plate and uh, prevents a run from scoring. 
We've yeah, seen two of those, just two runs saved, at least at the time, just from pure arm strength and great throws from the outfield. Great job, and also a great job from the runner on third to read that ball well and not get into a double play and keep the, keep the chance alive. That one gonna just barely miss there for ball one to Cal Nielsen. Nielsen on the day, one for two. A double in the second inning and then a pop up in inning number three. Big situation here for the cleanup hitter with runners in scoring position and Don's desperately needing them here down five in this fifth inning. A ball in the dirt will move the count to two and zero. Oh. Good stop from Braden Catterson to just gobble up that curveball in the dirt. Textbook. Yeah, again, both of these catchers are are absolutely sensational. Nielsen at the plate, um, and just yeah, just a, a, a textbook example of what you should do behind the plate. And Catterson with some several plays here so far on the day. Great pop up time. Just barely missed a throw that would have caught a guy stealing over at second base, and he's done a nice job here to block some pretty tough ones. So that one, Ooh, oh my goodness, that, 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 that's a little bit low, but uh, that's uh, going to be a called strike there for. Cal Nielsen is going to even the count at two and two. Nielsen knew it too. He body language there showed he did not like that call. <laughs> We've not seen much of that low in the zone so far today. Yeah, not so much. Uh, he's going to rip one over towards second base. That's going to score the run over from third. So a productive out for Cal Nielsen. He'll get the RBI ground out over to second base and it'll uh, cut the lead a little bit more here. The score now nine to five and it will also advance Duval over to third base and uh, it will bring up number five hitter Jackson Sorensen. Little tapper that just hits really literally right in front of our table. And it happened to hit at the yeah. one millisecond that I'm not, that looking, not looking, and I so look up like, and all oh, there's a ball. <laughs> yep, right at my face. So, I I won't I won't I won't rat you out. Yeah. Was like <laughs> Good thing there's no camera on us, right? Yes. Now it is tapped foul once again by Sorensen. So now an early 0-2 hole on him with two outs here in the top of the fifth. Two runs across here so far in this fifth inning for Spanish Fork cutting into this lead. Now just a four-run lead for the Golden Eagles. An 0-2 count to number five hitter Jackson Sorensen, who is 0 for 1 on the day. He took a walk in the second and grounded out in the third. 0-2 with a runner on third. That one definitely gets away from Nuttall for ball one. So now one and two. The question here is, do you have the courage to throw that curveball low? Catterson has done pretty well. He stopped one earlier. May not be necessary, but let's see what they do. They certainly they set it up, and it was it. the curveball, but yeah, ends up uh, just kind of hanging up in the zone there. Nice job by Sorensen to, to get a little piece of that one and stay alive with the count one and two. Uh, he might be kicking himself there. I, that one looked like it was right down Broadway. He was right on it, too. Didn't seem to be fooled. But, yeah, not all. Like I mentioned with a curveball, you want to get it in the dirt there. That one way too much down the middle. The one-two from Nuttall will be a bit outside and even up the count at two and two. I did say there's Duvall over at third, but now that Lamson is not pitching, they do have him on the base pass. So it is Lamson over there at uh, third base. Another one in the dirt. So now a full count with two outs here on Sorensen. Don's hoping to keep this inning rolling with two runs across already so far. The 3 2 oh, brings him up, catches the outside part of the plate. Sorensen in shambles after that one. Not uh, terribly happy about that particular call. First strikeout for Braden Nuttall comes at an excellent time as he is able to mostly maintain things here for 
the Golden Eagles as the uh, the run, extra run there will be charged to Blake Carter and uh, two runs coming across there in that inning for Spanish Fork. The score now nine to five as we move on over to the bottom half of the fifth inning gives us an opportunity here to thank our sponsors at Spanish Fork 17. That's MVP Sports, Lance Wilson State Farm, Triple T Heating, Cooling and Plumbing and Two Jacks Pizza. And thank you so much for tuning in today on the broadcast. Always fun to, to do the Crosstown Rivals and uh, always fun to, to do these, but also very fun to uh, promote our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Spanish Fork 17. Again, uh, we've got all sorts of phenomenal content on there, whether you, you just really love your, your high school sports, your Spanish Fork or Maple Mountain sports, or any other content that we do on the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and join the Spanish Fork 17 family at youtube.com slash Spanish Fork 17. Well, guess what, Andrew? That cloud is still out there. Still looming. Yep, just barely. It's almost, I don't know if dissipated is the, the correct scientific term there, but that's <laughs> what I'll use. I'm not a meteorologist at all, but Mountain, that thing is pesky. That's still out there. Hey, it just is kind of kind of hanging around, doing its thing, you know. It's uh, it's it's a it's a fun time. Yeah, but yeah, overall, just still beautiful day. You know we've talked about it up and down, but really nice day. Definitely come on out to these games, folks, if uh, you aren't able to, uh, or if you weren't able to today. But uh, you know, make some plans. Come on out. It's it's just a great time of year. Oh man, it is. You know, they say they say Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. I would put a little bit of, of a submission for early spring um, because we're coming out of winter. Baseball is happening. You still got, you know, you're wrapping up March Madness. Yep. Like there's there's a lot going on in like late March, early April. And so yep. uh, and, and you got Easter, you know, too. Oh, yeah, so, course. I mean, yeah, yeah I feel like you could put a plug in for early spring as one of them <laughs> most wonderful times of the year. So, yeah. you know, don't don't always just listen to Andy Williams, folks, you know. <laughs> Um, give give early spring a chance. <laughs> count two and one. He's going to sail and uh, move it to now three and one count on Sawyer Leifson. It'll be Leifson, Catterson, and Averett do up here in inning number five for the Golden Eagles. Batters six, seven, and eight in the lineup. And guys that have done damage so far. And so that one is in there for a strike. So it'll be a full count now on Leifson, who's one for one on the day. He's scored twice already in this ball game. So scored both times on a walk and on a single. And he's going to walk again here. So three plate appearances and uh, three times on base. That's a, a beautiful uh, formula if you're doing money ball. Billy Bean would be absolutely pleased um, with yes. his on base percentage. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, the uh, six, seven, eight, nine hitters have had a fantastic day for Maple Mountain, really setting the table uh, and also driving in some runs too. I mean, I'm looking here. I've got, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five six seven eight times that those batters have reached yeah this has been this has been a very productive part of the lineup here for the golden eagles and uh i mean a guy with tons of production right now Braden catterson who's one for one on the day he took a walk in inning number two and then hit an absolute bomb in inning number three a two-run home run and uh, that one's going to be up at his eyeballs and moves the count to two balls and no strikes these guys getting their second look at Marzial on the mound. And it went pretty well the first time that they saw him. The 2-0 outside. Nice patient approach here from Catterson. Moving the count now to 3-0. and Leifson at first after taking the leadoff walk here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. And Catterson well on his way to a base on balls as well with a three straight Make that now four straight balls, and uh, it'll be back-to-back -back walks here in the bottom of the fifth inning, and brings up Bennett Averett on the day, who has a uh, an RBI base hit. Um, I believe that they uh, ended up calling that one an RBI single with uh, an error, <laughs> yep. as that was that one that kind of was in that weird, like shallow right field area that just wasn't uh, fielded very cleanly. So, but does count as the an RBI there, and then he did uh, hit one out to left in his, uh, flew one out to left in his last at bat, so one for two on the day. Mound visit here for the Dons, talking things out with Marziel. Yeah, it looks like they made the change here. Uh, I think that's uh, Jesse Harrison, number 14, it looked like. 
who's coming in. Yeah, I just need uh, just need Nielsen to, to move yeah. here for a quick second. That is number 14. Yep, yep. So yeah, do Harrison. you have a pitching change here in inning number five? Jesse Harrison, uh, not too much action, but uh, no runs given up. Uh, he's pitched two and two-thirds innings. He has six strikeouts Whew. in two and two-thirds innings. So, so uh, only two outs yeah. that have not been strikeouts. Yep. That's, uh, woo. Well, <laughs> yep, yeah, impressive. So, and that's exactly what they're going to need here with two runners on. We've seen Maple Mountain drop down the bunts, although I think with Bennett Averett up, they likely will let him swing away. But yeah, we'll see. You know, two home runs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, we'll never know. Uh, you know, with uh, the, I mean, uh, yeah, machinations in the mind of, of the coaches. So. Absolutely. I mean, you didn't. You wouldn't have expected Bringhurst to lay down the bunt that right. he did in that third inning, and it yep. was a beauty, and uh, ended up producing a run. So I mean, you know, let what happened happen. But you know, you also like to see your big power hitters, uh, you know, taking taking healthy cuts at that baseball yep. and uh, hoping for more than one run with a with a swing. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah, as we've talked about with Averett, uh, having a real good comeback season. Uh, but yeah, still kind of lower in that batting order, which uh, you know can surprise people sometimes but i like having a little bit of thump uh lower in the order uh, it's a little bit harder to work around those things you know as far as your opposed to your traditional one through nine uh you know best hitters up at the top and moving your way down type of order so uh, it's put them in a tough spot right here with two runners on and we've talked about how good the bottom half of the order yeah. has been for Maple sensational today. today yep you got uh once again, batting for the Leifson, who's been on every time. Catterson's been on every time. Averett, one for two. And yeah. Warren also, you know, has yeah. been on both times. A walk and a yeah. single coming up in that nine spot. And yeah. they've, they've all come in clutch. A lot of RBI hits here yep. in the bottom half of this order. I mean, this is this is what makes Maple Mountain so dangerous. I mean, there's, there's really not, as you mentioned, there's not a break one through nine. I mean, you got a guy in Colby Warren who has been hitting in that two spot quite a bit in the order. He's batting ninth. Max Walker, who is batting in the number two spots, two for three on the day. Logan Bringhurst, um, again, batting in that five spots, had some. Uh, there we go. They're showing, yep. showing points. Yep. There you go. Oh, my goodness. So you, you yep. just never know. You just never yep. know. As they do keep things close, they do make the throw over to second base. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very diverse lineup with a lot of guys that just know how to get on base and know what they need to do in certain situations. Averitt shows Bunt once again, pulls it back, and then rips one out into right field. And it's going to get underneath the glove of the right fielder. That's going to be, it's going to end up being extra bases there for Bennett Averitt. The throw home is going to be a tick wild. So it is going to be an RBI two jacks double for Bennett Averitt. Oh, man, what an oppo shot, especially after pulling the bunt, yeah, pulling the bunt so away and then still being able to slap one like that. That was beautiful. That's so hard to do, to, to pull back and be ready for that pitch like that. A great job by Averitt. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of a misplay in right field, but that's a tough ball all over the yeah. head. So can't really blame the right fielder too much. Uh, and how about that now? The six, seven, eight, nine hitters have had 12 plate appearances and have reached 11 times out of those 12. Man. And now here's the number nine hitter here, Warren. Absolutely crazy stat. Warren's going to show bunt, takes a little poke at one, but it'll uh, end up being foul there. So count 0-1 now on Kobe Warren, as was mentioned. One for one on the day. Took a walk in inning number two and then uh, ended up with a single in the fourth inning and scored. So a nice productive day at the plate for the number nine hitter. He'll take a swing at that one for strike two. Double digit runs now for the Golden Eagles in this one, 10 to five. Extending the lead a little bit here against the Dons. Bottom half of the fifth inning. A little bit high there to Warren to move the count to one ball and two strikes. Runners on second and third. The uh, the, uh, the Golden Eagles definitely still threatening here in this inning. Warren will take a swing at a pretty nasty breaking pitch there for strike three. Yeah, we mentioned the strikeout totals for uh, Jesse Harrison on the mound for Spanish Fork. Got to see a little bit of that there. He got a nasty breaking ball that drops pretty sharply, fooling Warren there pretty well. Yeah. I, I can see why he uh, <laughs> has a lot of strikeouts. Again, the, the fastball's got some good velocity to it, and that, hey, that's a nasty breaking pitch. If he can uh, 
kind of harness all that together. And uh, uh, the one thing I've noticed here is the control is uh, a little bit a little bit off. But uh, this is a guy that uh, the Dons have got to be pretty excited about in terms of his potential. Just the, the stuff is definitely there. Just needs to find a way to harness it a little bit better as the count moves to 1-0 and here on A.J. Thomas. Absolutely. Also of note here with Thomas, he yeah, is a switch hitter. Left side. Yep. Uh, and there is that beautiful breaking pitch for strike one. one yeah, you'll see Thomas uh, bats with a little bit more power uh, over on the right side, but when he knows he just kind of needs to get on base, he does have that option. Does slap down a bunt down the third Ooh. baseline, and there was a potential opportunity there um, yep. to go home and uh, kind of held up a little bit, but does go over to first base for the out. I thought there was now a chance there. I, honestly, I think Max in a, Walker. I don't know. I mean, I, I'd have taken the shot there at home, but uh, probably the catcher there for uh, Spanish Fort Cal Nielsen. Typically, he's going to be the one to make the call, and I guess he was uh, shouting 1-1-1 one, one, one on that. Oof, man, making him look silly with that pitch. Yeah, and that's a, that's a rough swing there for for Max Walker for strike one. Nice day at the plate for the number two hitter in the Golden Eagles lineup. Two singles on the day and has scored on uh, on both of those. And he's going to take another swing at a pitch, and that's going to be strike two. The two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Two runs already across here for the Golden Eagles, 11-5. to five. So a six-run lead once again for Maple Mountain. The 0-2 going to be up in the zone and move the count to one and two. Oh, that's a curveball, and it was a beautiful one, but it'll just barely miss the outside part of the plate. Yeah, two-two Sp count now. Spanish Fork's going to want that call. They had that one, very similar spot called on them earlier. Two two is a dandy. Oh my goodness, what a pitch there from Harrison. That's his second strikeout of the ball game. Two runs across here in the bottom of the fifth inning for the Golden Eagles 11 5 ball game. We'll get you inning number six when we come back on Spanish Fork 17. If you're looking for a workout, you know MVP Sports is the place to start, and that includes pickleball. MVP Sports has all you need to get active in this growing sport. Paddles, shoes, clothing, and the pickleballs. MVP Sports in Spanish Fork. The best time to check your furnace is before it fails, and you can rely on Triple T to do the job right. Our technicians are trained every year so you can sleep better at night, knowing your furnace is safe to operate. Call Triple T at 798-7711 to schedule your tune-up today. Welcome back to Spanish Fork 17, inning number six of this one between the Spanish Fork Dons and the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. The score is 11 to 5. It's just been kind of a uh, just a, a constant flow of offense since inning number two for the Golden Eagles. Two runs, four runs, three runs, and now two runs in the, the past inning. And uh, for Spanish Fork, a big inning in the second inning with three runs, and then in the fifth getting two across. So, uh... Really, it's just been a very complete game. If you're a Golden Eagles fan, you saw a pretty, a pretty decent start from Blake Carter. Got through four innings and really just, just allowing the, the one big inning there in the, uh, the second inning, and then kind of chase there in the, the fourth inning, bringing on Braden Nuttle, who uh, ended up getting uh, the, the two runs are charged to Blake Carter, but uh, again, it was a uh, Nuttle allowing those runs, but uh, it's a. Uh, been a very fun ball game to watch if you're a Golden Eagles fan, and you've got to see two home runs in this one off the bat of Catterson and Chrisman. So it's uh, it's been a, a fun day here for Maple Mountain fans. This is Jake Rocher on the mound now. Oh, uh, Coach Thomas moving on from Nuttall after he got that inning of work from him. Uh, going really with the top of his bullpen uh, today with Nuttall and Rocher. Rocher is uh, oh. he has uh, gone 12 innings and given up one run. He's got 13 strikeouts. That uh, gives him quite the ERA of 
I mean, you'll you'll definitely take that. That's mm -hmm. a, that's a pretty solid ERA. As the count now here is is two and one on Breck and Anderson. It'll be Anderson, Marziale, and Shipman do up here in inning number six for the Dons. A Oppo slap shot out towards the the crowd over there, kind of that that big crowd over there down that first base line, and that'll uh, move the count here to uh, two balls and one strike. I mean, my apologies. I thought so. That was uh, that's his second strike. So two-two count here on Anderson. He gets rung up on that one. That's a beautiful pitch there from Rocher. So great way to start things off here in his relief appearance. First strikeout for Rocher. One out here in the top of the sixth, and Cal Marziel digging in for the Dons. Low and outside for ball one. Cal Marziel 0 for 2 on the day. A line out to center field and a strikeout in his two at-bats. One, oh, yet another one that just, you know, the, the breaking pitch is working nicely here, so why go away from it as that's uh, in there for a strike? A loud one over towards Shorts, and uh, it's going to get under the glove of Leifson. Thought he had that one gobbled up, but uh, just kind of sneaks right under him. I don't know if that took a bit of a funny hop mm -hmm. or something. It just, I don't think it hit the mound. Sometimes it can cause some funny spin when it hits that dirt by the pitcher. That'll be the, the first charged error of the day for the Golden Eagles. There will be a, an E6 there on on Leifson, so Marzia will will reach base and uh, now be Bryce Shipman coming in, one for two. For Spanish Fork, he's gonna pop this thing up. It will get up and out of play. And count will be 0-1. Definitely going to that breaking ball quite a lot, but that one, Shipman was, was on a good bit. Got a good fastball, but hasn't used it much so far. Oh, gets an absolutely nasty swing there out of Shipman. It'll be a 0-2 hole now on the Spanish Fork first baseman. Tegan Scott do up next here for Spanish Fork, and he's had quite the day in the number nine spot. Two doubles on the day for Scott. Love to get multiple runners on with him hitting as well as he does. And, oh, what a nasty one. That's some high heat right up in the face of Bryson Shipman. Just a little check swing at it. He'll go down on strike. Second strikeout already for Rocher. And, uh, ooh, man, that one, that one nasty. That's what a good curveball will do because when he throws that, it looks like it's heading right towards your head. So you got to keep your composure and uh, stay with the pitch. And in that case, he doesn't throw the curveball. He throws the fastball up at his head and just, yeah, kind of a self-defense swing. As the, the old people call it, was a little bit of chin music. Yep. As, uh, that one, that one, not quite chin music, more elbow music. Um, and it will move the count now to one ball and one strike. I've been told chin music is a, is an old timer phrase. It, uh, <laughs> it uh, makes me a little bit sad, but uh, one of these, you know, it'll catch on with the kids. I hope. <laughs> I, I really hope so, because yep. uh, it's just great. The count song, one yeah. and two here with two outs in the top of the sixth. Oh, and uh, uh, ooh, that's, well, uh, that's that's squarely on the back. <laughs> <laughs> that's not chin music. Right no, there. nothing, that's nothing chin there. All all upper lat there. Um, <laughs> Jeez. Uh, it's going to be uh, one that will, will tickle Scott for a little bit, I think, as uh, he'll make his way over to first base, and Marziel will make his way over to second base. So runners on first and second with two outs in the top of the sixth inning and a fourth plate appearance here for Nixon Warren. Warren is one for two on the day. A ground out and a single scored in the fifth inning. Did take a walk in the first. I'd be sitting breaking ball here. Maybe losing command of the fastball a bit. He goes back to the fastball. He does a nice job there by Warren to slap that foul. So it'll be a 0-1 count on the Don's center fielder. 11-5 ball game here. Six-run lead for the Golden Eagles over the Don's on Spanish Fork 17. A couple of two-run home runs for the Golden Eagles. One off 
the bat of Braden Catterson, the catcher. The other one off the bat of their slugging first baseman, Cy Chrisman. And just a steady diet of, of hits all around. Just really doing a nice job on offense. A little bit outside there by Rocher to move the count to one ball and one strike. Starting that pitch too far outside. Want to start that at the uh, batter, kind of on that inside part of the plate. The 1-1 one from Rocher will just miss just a little bit low there. So count now two and one. Riley Lampson in the on deck circle for Spanish Fork. He's already been hit twice by pitches. Another one that will be a little bit outside, a little bit low as well. Count moves to three and one on Warren. In runners on first and second here with two outs on top of the sixth inning. Scott at first and Marziale at second. I don't think Warren's going to be aggressive here. One of their better hitters, and it hitters count. Yeah, roped a beautiful single in his last at bat. And he does a good job of laying off that breaking pitch, and he will make his way on over to first, and that's going to load the bases here with two outs in the top of the sixth inning and bring up number two hitter, Riley Lampson, who's 0 for 1 on the day. Not uh, necessarily his fault. As uh, the last two times he's been up, he's been hit by a pitch. Yeah. He'll watch a pitch go low and outside for ball one. Big hitters in the Dons lineup really do up here. Lampson and then Dart there in the on-deck circle. This uh, really kind of feels like a moment if the Dons are going to come back in this ball game, they could really use a hit here from Lampson and set up a, a big RBI opportunity for Dart as well. Yeah, it just feels like they're one extra base hit away from making this one interesting. Yep. And we'll see if Lampson is the one to be able to deliver that. The 2-0 pitch upcoming here from Rocher. Is slapped out into right field. Johnston giving chase and making the play as uh, Rocher will strand the runners here. Keep uh, right, it uh, a blank here. But, uh, man, the, the Dons absolutely threaten. Load the bases up. Nice job by Rocher. Get out of the bases. Load a jam. A zero up on the scoreboard for the Golden Eagles. Still an 11-5 ball game here. As we move on over to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Gives us an opportunity to thank our sponsors here at Spanish Fork 17. Mac, roll it. Of course, we've got Two Jacks Pizza, Lance Wilson State Farm, MVP Sports, and Triple T Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. That is our shout-out to our sponsors here at Spanish Fork 17. We give them a special thanks. I want to remind you that uh, our next broadcast is going to be not this Friday, but the following Friday on April 19th, 3.30 p.m. It will be the Golden Eagles up against the Cedar Valley Aviators. That uh, should be a fun series there against the Aviators. Again, catch that one next Friday at 3.30 p.m. here on Spanish Fork 17. I mean, any opportunity you can get to get these Golden Eagles, you should be taking it. They've just been so good this year. I would not be shocked to see them finish top five in rpi they honestly have a chance to to really make some noise because a lot of the kind of the top teams in rpi are in region seven so now that they're yep. in region play they really have a nice opportunity here to bump up that rpi and uh maybe dare i say it could sneak their way into number one potentially in rpi by the end of the year so uh, they, they certainly have that that type of ceiling to them yes absolutely they've got some great pitching you know that they're going to be led by chase johnston who uh, honestly, I mean, he's been great, but, uh, you know, maybe had rocky moments here or there so far this year. And you know he's only going to get better and better, uh, still with an ERA in the low two area. Just fantastic innings-eating pitcher. And, of course, a uh, BYU baseball commit as well. So Chase Johnson is just going to be uh, a huge, huge piece for them going forward this season and into the uh, state tournament. Yeah, he's just, just so impressive. I mean, you, you saw all the tools with him last year, just such an impressive sophomore year. And, uh, you know, yeah, as you've mentioned, a few a few bumpy things here early on 
in the season. Did kind of struggle a little bit in the uh, the tournament down in down in St. George, but uh, man, boy, did he pitch a beauty though on Monday. Like, yeah. and that's that's what you want to see if you're Coach Thomas. If you can get your ace Johnston really back and, and loaded to where he's at, oh man, the sky is the limit for this team. The one-two for Christman is going to be chopped over to Harrison. He'll make the throw on over to first. A little bit dicey over there, but uh, the play is made for out number one here in the sixth. Now batting for the Eagles, number 17. It's no easy feat right there getting Christman to just chop it. Yeah, to chopped it just right down. up the middle. Yeah, kind of got him got him chasing it. One that was kind of up bit above his eyes, kind of put a, a little bit of a, a tomahawk swing on that one a bit. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and as you said, uh, with – Harrison a lot of potential with him only a sophomore yes. this year so I'm liking what I'm seeing from him so far oh man another and great he threw pitch. a nasty one to, to Johnston there for strike one again yeah the the stuff here is is special if they can find a way to get him to, to harness his control a little bit this this is a kid that uh, they'll be able to lean on here the next the next two years for their pitching staff as it's an early 0-2 hole here on Johnston he tries to then go inside with yet another breaking pitch. That one will miss, though, and will move the count to one and two. I don't think he's really afraid of anybody. He went right after Chrisman. I mean, Chrisman. went right after Chrisman. Yeah. That, that should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> yeah, going right after Johnston here. So he's got uh, some moxie. He's got some courage. He isn't afraid of uh, whoever's in that batter's box. The one-two to Johnston is crushed out to center field. Unfortunately for him, it is the deepest part of the ballpark, and the play will be made out there by Warren for out number two. Well struck ball, but wind has died down a good bit here, too. The flagpoles are pretty stagnant now, so ball just kind of dies, as you said, in the deepest part of the ballpark. Well struck there by Johnston, but it'll be uh, caught by Warren for out number two, and that is going to bring up number five hitter Logan Bringhurst over two on the day, and uh, we'll watch that one in for a strike. Did lay down a beautiful sacrifice bunt, an RBI sacrifice bunt in that third inning. He'll take a slap at that one and foul it away. So yet again, 0-2 after getting Johnston down 0-2. Now Bringhurst now down with the same count and two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Tries to get him to chase a high fastball. Nothing doing those. The count will move to one and two. And they're going to say oh, that he wow. went. So it is going to force a throw over to first base and just oh, a tough man. angle there for wow. for Shipman. That's a, that's kind of a nice little break there for uh, for the Golden Eagles. I mean, it goes down as a K in the in the books for uh, for Harrison, but uh, it is a another base runner there for the Golden Eagles, and it'll bring up Sawyer Lafson, who's been red hot, two uh, one for one on the day, but uh, two walks, so a guy that's reached base every time. So uh, this is the part of the order that uh, we we already highlighted that's really just been very effective here today for Maple Mountain. So, man, for Harrison, you really wanted to find a way to, to get Bringhurst out. Yeah. It's not getting as many chases now on that curveball in the dirt. I mean, he did get the chase That's for, true. for <laughs> Bringhurst, but it just happened to be a, a bad beat, bad break for him. They uh, smartly do uh, bring in a, uh, a speed-up runner here for... Uh, run for the Eagles, number 36, Blake Palmer. Bring in Blake Palmer to run there for Bringhurst. It's a high probability of some movement here on the base pass. You got a six run lead, two outs, likely your last at bat uh, in this game, uh, meaning last chance here in this bottom of the six before we get into the seventh. So uh, I would not be shocked to see some movement on the base paths. Yeah, a little bit of aggression, you know, trying to maybe manufacture a little bit of insurance, you know, here up by six, obviously, but also just giving your your bench an opportunity to, to get some game action and to, you know, get some things going as that pitch will be upstairs and move the count to 2-0 and oh on Leifson. And there he is up and running. The throw by Nielsen is on time. And that's going to gun him down. Nice throw by Cal Nielsen to end this sixth inning. He will catch Palmer stealing over there at second. And the score... 
will stay 11 to 5, and we'll get you the seventh inning when we come back on Spanish Fork 17. For your surprisingly great rates, contact your local State Farm agent today. Contact State Farm agent Lance Wilson today. Hi, welcome to Two Jacks Pizza. For the best pizza you'll ever taste and our world-famous cheese sticks, come to Two Jacks Pizza on Main Street in Spanish Fork or call us for a quick delivery. Are you hungry yet? Welcome back to Spanish Fork 17. It's inning number seven of this one between the Spanish Fork Dons and the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. The score is 11 to five, a nice cushy six run lead here for Maple Mountain over Spanish Fork as we head into this last frame. Last opportunity here for the Dons to attempt to tie this ball game up. We'll need six runs to, to keep this ball game alive as we are seeing Rocher get warmed up here for a, a second inning of work. Did a, a fairly nice job in inning number six to get two strikeouts. Was a little bit erratic though. Ended up uh, walking two guys and did hit a guy, but uh, ended up stranding all the runners. So left, uh, left the, the, run, the bases all loaded there in that sixth inning. So did a good job of uh, mitigating the damage and getting through the pressure. Yeah, absolutely. And don't need anything fancy here. No walks, just if you're uh, Maple Mountain, let, you know, make the Dons earn their way on base. Uh, no free passes. Also wanted to, uh, you know, give a quick shout out. We had our break there. Uh, Cal Nielsen at catcher. What a great throw to second to gun down the uh, pinch runner there. And, uh, you know, just a perfect one bounce hop right on the money. That's that's great. That's yeah, great again, throw. we've 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 highlighted both of these catchers. Catterson and Nielsen both are, are just excellent behind the backstop and that's a perfect example from from nielsen great pop-up time and then just throws a, a nice little dot over there to, to second base and uh i mean a little bit a little bit aggressive there you know yeah. uh, on on the base pass but uh that's uh that's not the catcher's fault yeah. <laughs> so he definitely did his job as the count is one to know here on darden he takes a hack at just a, a nasty pitch there for uh for strike one it is the heart of the order here for the dons in inning number seven will dark cal nielsen and jackson Sorensen are due up here in this uh, seventh inning for Spanish Fork. And again, they runs very much at a premium here. They they do need six to come across. And now oh, he just absolutely gets fooled by that breaking pitch to move the count to one and two. Yep, bailed out. Thought that one was heading right for his shoulder. And it's a called strike. There's nothing more embarrassing <laughs> than as a hitter. I, I say that because I've been there plenty of times. So nothing against uh, Dart. Does, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah we, we've all been there. Uh, you just get absolutely fooled. Yeah, just, just a beautiful pitch there from Rocher. Then comes back with one that will miss the zone. So now a 2-2 count on Dart, and he will get a little piece of that one and send it out of play and keep things alive 2-2. Two and two. But a good job there. See, he wasn't fooled on that one and, you know, maybe even missed a, a good pitch to hit there but stayed alive. So, you know, got fooled on it once, but he's seen it now, and uh, he's in a good spot. The 2-2, and uh, that one was close. <laughs> I actually yeah. kind of saw the expression on Dart's face of like, oh, that was probably too close <laughs> for comfort. But uh, luckily for him, it does just miss a little bit up and inside. It moves the count to full. The payoff pitch is slapped down into center field. Well-struck ball there by Dart, but the play will be made out there in deep center field by Bennett Averett for out number one. Yeah, nothing fancy there from uh, Rocher. 3-2 count when you're up by six. First batter, just heater. Just, you know, like I mentioned, let them earn their way on. Pretty well struck ball, but placed in a good spot. Hit a little high and got the first out. Cal Nielsen will pop one foul to start things off in his at-bat. So 0-1. Oh Nielsen, one for three on the day, roped a, roped a double in his uh, his first at bat in the third, popped up in the third, and then an RBI ground out in the fifth. Well outside for ball one. One out in the top of the seventh inning, six-run ball game here. Spanish Fork really needing to pile it on here to keep this ball game alive. Do have the heart of the order up here. Cal Nielsen, their cleanup hitter up right now. Beautiful breaking pitch from 
Roshu there, kind of low and outside. Count now one and two. Nielsen chokes up a little bit and slaps one well out into center field. Once again, busy, busy inning out there for Bennett Averett, and he'll uh, cover a decent amount of ground there for out number two. These outfielders for Maple Mountain have been superb, not just making the routine plays, but there's been some great, well, a fantastic Man, I mean, catch. Yeah, from, fantastic catch from Averett. Yeah. Absolutely spectacular. Dun -dun 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 yep, stuff. Yeah, I mean, absolutely <laughs> exactly. web gem. Sports Center top 10 type stuff, and then some just great throws yep. as well to prevent runs, which, yep. uh, I mean, Averett and um, oh, who's out in left field today? Oh, um, uh, yep, uh, out in left field. Walker, my apologies to Max. Yeah, Max Walker also throwing an absolute dot as well. Oh, just barely missing on the, the inside part of the plate. Now a 2-0 count here on uh, Jackson Sorensen. Oh, little? my apologies. We actually have a pinch hitter here. Oh. It's number 20. That one is going to be inside, so the count 3 and 0. Oh. Pratt Morley, looks like. Yeah, Morley. Freshman. Well, yeah, as you were talking about, I mean, I, I feel like having solid outfielders is it's kind of like the special teams of, of baseball, if you will, um, especially when they can have strong arms, accurate arms, because that's the thing, is that their throws weren't just uh, strong. They weren't and it wasn't just that, it was that they were on point as on well. Point. So just great job saving some runners, uh, getting some extra outs with the diving catch. So fantastic job by those outfielders. So Morley does a nice job to get himself on with two outs here in the seventh inning. So runner on first for Spanish Fork, and uh, they just about catch him dead over there at first, though, as he got an excellent lead. But uh, Catterson quickly Pops up and sends it on over. Count 1-0 and here on Brecken Anderson, who's 0-2 for 2 on the day. A line out and a strikeout. Did lay down a, a nice sacrifice bunt in the second inning. Ooh, oh, that one very closer. close. That was an excellent excellent tag there by, by Crispin, but just, uh, just a tick short. Uh, well, I guess a, a tick late, I guess, on the... No. I don't know if the first base coach was saying there, like, you know, we don't... We don't need you to this be is, aggressive here. This is, not, this is not how we want to end the game. <laughs> it's on a, on a pickoff. But, eh, you know, it's still, still a decent lead over there at first base. A little bit low to move the count to 2 and 0 oh on Anderson. Cal Marziel in the on deck circle for Spanish Fork. Should Anderson find his way on base? Another throw over to first. Nothing doing. And. Again, Anderson will dig back in here with the count 2 and 0. Oh. Rocher doing a nice job here in relief to kind of close things out for the Golden Eagles. One out away from ending this ball game and uh, getting a sweep here in this opening series against the Dons. A very dominant 10 2 start to the season for the Golden Eagles. And that's a nice pitch there by by Rocher, and it's one that's been working pretty well for him as the count now three and one. I get why not go up by six, three zero. -oh. Yeah, you know, get some practice on that breaking ball. Absolutely, that one in the dirt. The second walk issued here, back to back walks in this seventh yeah. inning, as that has been the Achilles' heel for for Rocher. That's the fourth walk that he's issued so far. In, in this game and in his inning in two thirds is uh, the command has uh, not been particularly great from from that standpoint. But again, you see the, the natural stuff here from the kid like he's got he does have a great breaking pitch and he's got some good velocity on his fastball. Uh, it's just, again, kind of kind of like Harrison on the other side of things for for Spanish Fork like you. You see it there, but uh, you just want him to be a little bit more selective and be able to just kind of hone in on the craft and uh, yeah, just yeah, yeah, just kind of harness those pitches a little bit better than he is right now. He, he definitely leads with that breaking ball, but of course it's going to be a little bit harder to keep that feel. And it looks like it's just been just a little off, a little you know hit and miss at times. And his pitch count is rising. I don't have a count on it, but uh, it's it's not been the easiest of outings, and you know that plays into future appearances. So I'm sure Coach Thomas is hoping for a little bit cleaner of an appearance from Rocher. 
And that's a good way to start things off there. First pitch strike to Cal Marziel, who is 0 for 3 on the day. A line out, a strikeout, and dead reach on an error by Leifson. Oh, one low and in the dirt, so it'll advance the runners into scoring position. So, you know, they'll making things a little bit interesting here in, in inning number seven as Morley will find his way to third, and Anderson will be over there at second base. Now Marziel with an opportunity to punch a base hit and score two runs and uh, cut this lead to four potentially. I'd like to see just a little bit more of the heater here. Still got a sizable lead and you know, it was okay to kind of play around with it earlier, but time to time to finish this one off if you're Maple Mountain in there. Yeah, and that's, that's what you want to see. Just a nice quality fastball in there for strike two. One strike away from wrapping up this ball game and uh, moving to 11 and two on the season. Maybe go curveball here one last time. And set goes for the heater inside, and Marziel able to just get a little piece of that one to keep things going at one and two. Big noise from the Golden Eagles dugout, and he will ring him up looking. Cal Marziel goes down on strikes. Number three on the day for Rocher, and that is going to close the book here on this game. 11 to 5, big win here for the Golden Eagles over the Dons. We'll get you a recap of this one when we come back on Spanish 417. If you're looking for a workout, you know MVP Sports is the place to start, and that includes pickleball. MVP Sports has all you need to get active in this growing sport. Paddles, shoes, clothing, and the pickleballs. MVP Sports in Spanish Fork. The best time to check your furnace is before it fails, and you can rely on Triple T to do the job right. Our technicians are trained every year so you can sleep better at night, knowing your furnace is safe to operate. Call Triple T at 798-7711 to schedule your tune-up today. surprisingly great rates contact your local state farm agent today contact state farm agent lance wilson today hi welcome to two jacks pizza for the best pizza you'll ever taste and our world famous cheese sticks come to two jacks pizza on main street in spanish fork or call us for a quick delivery are you hungry yet Welcome back to Spanish Fork 17. This one, a fun one here between the Golden Eagles and the Dons. It goes in favor of Maple Mountain. The score ends up 11 to 5. A big statement win here for Maple Mountain. They'll take the series here, a little two game set here against the Dons. They took Monday's game 8 to 1, now taking this one 11 to 5. A, a decent starting appearance from uh, from Blake Carter and then some some good offense a couple of home runs in this game for the Golden Eagles some really nice sacrifice punts as well on offense really I just felt like this was this was a nice complete game here to wrap up this series for the Golden Eagles absolutely it's uh, I think you hit the nail on the head there there were moments of small ball that we saw uh, some bunts a lot of bunts actually dropped down even some uh, you know, safety squeeze bunts that were dropped, a, a run scoring from a bunt from uh, Thomas. Uh, yeah, a lot of that. And then it was the, the moment that you kind of, uh, you know, got reeled in on the small ball was when uh, the Golden Eagles went yard on you. So two of those uh, home runs scoring two runs each. And honestly, uh, yeah, just a great offensive showing from the Golden Eagles. And that'll lead us to our uh, MVP sports, MVP of the game. And uh, this one we, we had a lot of fun with. I, I, I really love our selections that we have for Maple Mountain. We are going to be going with uh, Braden Catterson, the catcher. Had a great job or did a great job behind the plate today, but also put up some offensive numbers. Uh, reached all three times, had two walks, uh, scored twice, and, of course, hit the big or excuse me scored three times and then uh, had the big two run home run in the third inning that really kind of opened things up a little bit there I believe it was four to three at that point a tight game and hits a two out two run home run that gave Maple Mountain momentum and breathing room 
So really great stuff from Braden Catterson behind the plate and right next to the plate at the dish swinging the bat. So, uh, Braden Catterson, you are our MVP, sports MVP of the game. Yeah, Catterson absolutely fantastic for the Golden Eagles. We want to also do a, an MVP sport MVP of the game for Spanish Fork as well. That one going to Tegan Scott. Tegan Scott was two for two on the day with two doubles. One of those, a two-run double in that second inning that really did, you know, it, it gave Spanish Fork life here in this yeah. game. They took the lead there in the top half of the second, and it looked like for a moment there, like, like the momentum was very much in the Don's favor after that inning, and very much a lot of that had to do with Tegan Scott. He hit another double in the fifth inning, ended up getting hit by a pitch in the sixth, so again, he reached base every single time. That uh, was just really solid production from that number nine spot. Usually when we give Tegan Scott the MVP of the game, it's because of his exploits on the mound. This time it's for his exploits in the batter's box. So two doubles for Tegan Scott. So he is our MVP, sports MVP of the game on the Spanish Fork side of things. Again, big shout out to Braden Catterson on the Golden Eagle side of things. I want to also shout out Cy Crisman as well. I know that he's one that probably gets a, a lot of plaudits, but I mean, he absolutely mashed a two-run home run there in that fourth inning as we get a nice view of the mountains. It is now cloudless, by the I think so. Oh, no, yep. well, there, it is just yeah. slightly wisping over there, but yeah. uh, it is yeah. still just, it was a beautiful day here at the ballpark. <laughs> we want to remind you that we got another game coming at you here next week. It will be the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles up against the Cedar Valley Aviators. That game coming at you again Friday, April 19th at 3.30 p.m. Again, this Region 7 is absolutely impressive. I mean, four of the top 10 teams, uh, five, five of the top 10 teams in RPI are in Region 7. So all of these games are going to be super meaningful here for the Golden Eagles and for the Dons. And uh, I would not be shocked if the number one team in RPI doesn't come from Region 7. So we're we're very excited about that. Always fun to call the Crosstown Rivalry Games. We've had a, a fun couple days here with the Dons and the Golden Eagles. Thank you so much for tuning with us here on Spanish Fork 17. For our crew here at Spanish Fork 17, I'm Andrew LaRose. He's Mac Branding. What a fun game here if you're a Golden Eagles fan. The final score, 11 to 5. We will catch you next Friday when these Golden Eagles face off against the Aviators here on Spanish Fork 17.